going live. All right, this is live, live stream two, baby. And we're live, apparently. Okay. Woo! I'll have to take YouTube's word for it. So I'm going to pop out this chat. So... Hey, everybody, if you can hear us now. How's it going? <laughs> okay. Uh, As you can see. see, I'm here with Josh, and we're streaming. Same idea that we did before, but now we're streaming. Yo, yo. We'll just testing out all the angles here. So now my video feed gets Let's to look better than his, because now he's coming in on Skype. So, <laughs> so now, <laughs> what's funny is I have to now log in to watch your live stream, <laughs> right? You're not, you're not uh, permanently logged in on YouTube? Let's see here. All right. So. So Josh and I are both using the new Atom Mini from Blackmagic. You got you got a couple camera angles set up this time, Josh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the main camera angle. And you got Otis in the background. Oh. <laughs> and then here you got the secondary. What do you got, Gerald? Let's see it. Well, I got my main angle here. And then I've got my sort of, I don't know, BTS shot. I could see you on my screen, in my screen. That's creepy. Uh, and then I've got a close-up so we can talk about this guy here. This is the, the Aiden Mini. And then I actually have a fourth angle. That wait, I'm wait, wait. You did it. <laughs> you did a nice little fade transition there, bro. I like yeah, that. That's a, that's a feature. <laughs> nice little cross-fade. I got the mix button here and then auto. So <laughs> if I press it, it fades. And then check this out. I even have my Nintendo Switch. I don't know what that's for. Not for the live stream, but <laughs> it's, it's there if we need it. Uh, okay. Oh, there Let's we go. See here. All right. So we got a super chat here from Chris O. Google say give you free money. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Uh, all right. Let's check the chat. Make sure nobody said that we're... Yeah, Josh is really pixelated. Yeah, unfortunately, we're using Skype to communicate so it's based on obviously however well skype is going to send his video signal to me which isn't the greatest today but uh i've heard rumors about la internet not being the best in the world so uh you know i could try plugging it hold on one second <laughs> <laughs> okay in the meantime i will give you guys some info on the Aiden mini because i told black magic that i would since they sent it to me to use for this stream it's actually pretty sweet so far uh, okay, so let me get a close-up on it in the meantime. All right, let me get my chat out of the way here. So, four inputs, and they're all scaled HDMI inputs. So, you know, right now I've got, I think these two are 4K, this one's 1080p, and it scales them all evenly, and you can scale anything I think from 720 up to 4K, but it only outputs 1080, but I mean it'll deal with the signals. And it, you can also scale the frame rates too, so it'll accept from like 24p to 60p, and so that's a pretty sweet value to have four independent scalers in a single capture card because the thing's only like 300 bucks. Uh, so that's what these four are for here. And then these are your <laughs> audio controls. So right now I have them all off because I'm using my Zoom for audio. But you could have it as audio follows video or you could have as dedicated audio. That way if you were switching sources, I could switch the separate input sounds. Or I can have it just only take the sound from channel one and have these not take the sound, which is pretty sweet. And then there's also two inde inde independent mic inputs that have the same control, but those are only 3.5 millimeter TRS mic inputs, not XLR. So my point that I'm gonna make about this further on in the stream is that this is pretty great all-in-one solution for a streamer. The only thing it doesn't have is an XLR input basically. So let me switch back to me. What do you think about it so far, Josh? Uh, you've been playing with it a little bit? Yeah, I just added a little, uh, I mean, you could do this in OBS, but uh, I just <laughs> add my own little graphic here, which is kind of nice. I think I have one, too. <laughs> Go back to camera one. No, I don't. <laughs> Mine just went black. You can add in it. a bunch of, you can add in a. <laughs> you know what I'll do? Uh, let's I'll see show, what else I got in here. I'll show uh, what you're probably looking at. So if I bring up, let me bring up the software. You're using the software, right? To show like your media library or whatever. So, yeah. If I put this on the yeah, screen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Atom software. Okay, so you see, you guys can see the software now. See. If I go over to the media panel, you can add media into these stills here. It's only stills, though. I don't think that you can add video in. So if I, let's see here. You have I to use OBS in. software if you want to use video. Exactly. But yeah. for stills, it's great. Um, 
So I can put this in. Although I suppose here. you know, if you had one of the hyper decks, exactly. Yeah. So it, they, you Gerald. The, I don't know if you know this, but but Black Magic. Yeah, Black Magic also makes like these big hyper decks that um, for regular broadcast use, and those ones you you can play back. Um, they have like little capture cards where you can store media on there. So it's probably a more robust version of OBS, but all of these functions you can actually just do in OBS. That's pretty cool. So what Josh would have done then is he would have added his picture here in the media control and then you could add a bunch of stills but so that one's added so now when he presses the still button on his let me switch over so you can see it when he presses the still button right there it should yeah so see it brings up my logo that's what josh did but it brought up his logo so that's kind of cool if you needed a cut too because they also have a fade to black which you can press and it kind of like fades out your stream and it will fade out audio as well if you need it to do that for whatever purpose so that's pretty cool. And then over here, you have a bunch of mix controls. So you can see that when I switch inputs, it kind of crossfades between them. That's mix, but we also have dip. So you can like dip to a color. There's those DVE pushes, which I think you guys have probably seen before. Let me do one. I think they work like it's like this. So it like pushes it across. Oh, shit. Across we, got like Jay the... we got Jason Anthony in the chat. Oh, really? Gerald, do you know Jason? Yeah, I think I feel yeah, like I met him at an event what recently. Up, what up, G? Yeah, so, yeah. He's, a, he's a really good dude. Let me check the chat. I haven't checked uh, it in a while. Jason Anthony's been doing some really good work lately. I've been really impressed with his uh, photography and video game. It's been stepping it up, bro. Making some making some art. Let me uh, uh, blast the chat. Yeah, hey, Gerald, when are you going to get this haircut of yours? So December 1st is my two-year mark. So And my <laughs> birthday is December 4th, so I'll probably make it some kind of combo of like around the beginning of December is when I cut it all off. Um, what else we got in here? The price? Yeah, it's 300 bucks, the Ada Mini. Uh, any idea when they'll start shipping? I heard that they just started shipping last week or this week, so probably soon if you order, you might start to get one soon. Live stream your haircut. <laughs> the fades look fancy. Yeah, the fades are really good. There's a couple other ones in there that you can, like, few different transitions that you can use and then there's keying as well if you're into chroma keying like for maybe you have a green screen or whatever you can key right in here you set up your key and then turn it on and off and then it also has picture in picture which isn't always useful but there is a way to customize it so if I turn that on you can't see it right now because it puts it really small and in the corner but in the software you can uh, change reposition it but you just can't customize it on the buttons the buttons are just going to put little ones in the corner but if you have the software open you can resize it that was the only complaint i think i was reading and you and i were talking about it, josh so the picture in picture you found when you're pressing the buttons that it was somewhat limited uh but you can change it in that software well i mean i guess the picture the pic yeah the picture in picture works kind of but you have to uh-oh i did something there <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> out of the box. Uh, out of the box, it's limited. I haven't but you figured can out the exact it. formula. Uh, yeah. So let me close this. I feel like I, we've, I feel like you and I have probably only scratched the surface on what these switchers can do. Um, what's cool, what's going to be real interesting is like when you try to multiply uh, two of them in there, uh, two or three, because then, I mean, that's a lot of cameras, though. <laughs> I probably have enough cameras to do that, to do two of them. That would be excessive, wiring up every GoPro I have. But, I mean, that could be dope. I, I have aspirations to do a drone, a live drone shot. That'd be, that'd that be would interesting. Be sweet. What do you think of that, Gerald? You'd have to have a wireless HDMI, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the one thing I didn't mention, though, that's pretty no, cool. No, um, you can do a live... You can, Go ahead. You can do a live feed out of, I think, the Inspire 2. Oh, can you? It doesn't, doesn't need a separate... I think you can do a live... I think you can on. do... Yeah, a live feed. Nope. That's cool. Uh, oh, thanks, Chris, for the happy early birthday. It'd be like, live from News News Chopper 6. Oh, <laughs> when's your birthday? December 4th. So what's that? Two weeks, I think? Oh, uh, that's right. For your haircut. For your haircut. Uh, uh, hey, Jacques All Slade. Right. Jacques Slade is in the chat. Jacques Cousteau. Oh, snap. This guy's a big deal. Did you see him Jacques on Disney Plus? Did you guys see 
Uh, he was on the Jeff Goldblum new show on Disney Plus. Was, was he really? Yeah, he was Jeff Goldblum's Dude, sneaker jock. expert. That's awesome. Or it wasn't just sneaker expert. It was like unboxing sneakers, like how to make an unboxing video. It was pretty funny. It was awesome. He says, "Who allowed you two to do this?" Wow. We do, we're we're not supposed <laughs> to be doing this. If, if we get caught, we'll get shut down. But we're trying to run as long as we can. <laughs> The last thing that we're I not wanted, running up to code. The last thing I wanted to mention about the Ada Mini before I forget, so that I've done my done my part to Black Magic and said all my favorite things about it, is it has an Ethernet port, and I played with this last night, and it speaks to what you were saying about Josh of like how much crazier can you go with it. I found that if you connect it to your router, yeah. then any other computer on the network can control the same software. So I did a test last night, and when I was busy moving cameras. Uh, on another remote computer, they were able to use the software to switch the cameras for me. So that's really, really sweet. And all you have to do is... I'll tell you why... Go ahead. I'll tell you why that's really, really dope. Because, um, so if you have someone else working, I don't know if you're, Gerald, if your wife helps you out behind the scenes, but um, my wife helps out every now and then. And I also got a little intern back here. You guys want to say hello to my intern? Yeah. Yo. Alex, come say hello. Come say hello to Gerald Undone and the rest of the internet. <laughs> Look at this dude. This dude's killing it. He's 19. Way to he's go. Going to, he's going to LMU. Yeah. He's in the film school program. Now he's in the Make Art Now school program. That's right. Awesome. We got a loaded prestigious. chat here. We got. So we just found out that. <laughs> Did you see this, Josh? We got Polar Pro. We got Jacques uh, Slave. We, just... we got Jason Anthony. Like the chat's just. Blowing up right oh, now. Oh shoot! Pull up. We got a brand in the chat. Wow. <laughs> uh, so this, yeah, you, uh, you have an idea for the Ethernet? This, this chat is sponsored by Polar Pro. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Polar Pro and Black Magic Design. Let's see. <laughs> hey, can you get me a logo that says Polar Pro and Black Magic put together, and then and then send it to me, and I'll put it on my Ada yeah. Mini. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's exactly what I did, Josh. Let's see how quick you can do that. I had Julie on her computer. Her like office is just over there. And I was like, okay. So I was just kind of yeah. dancing around in the middle space here. And I was like, give me a camera two, give me a camera three. And it was like, it was fast. Basically, as soon as you connect it, you have to connect the I Ethernet mean, port to your router. And then any computer that's on that router, because it's using the same gateway, you can install the software on it. And it just sort of finds it. The only trick is that uh, one of them has to be connected via USB so that you can set it up, but any other computer doesn't have to be on USB. It just has to be on the same network. So she was like switching the, the it's so funny. things for me. <laughs> We're like, we get to play broadcasters now. That's, that's the, right. That's the kind of cool thing. Now all of this tech, yeah, all this technology is like at our fingertips. And if you have more than one camera and you got a little switcher, I mean, you could just run a, your own broadcast TV show. It's like, it's not even that hard. It's crazy. Woo! I, I agree, and I think for because I think for a company for for streamers who like maybe you're just a gamer or something, right? With this device, you could do pretty much everything because it does have picture in picture, which you can customize. You can chroma key if you like to do the green screen. You can set up multiple camera angles. The only really the only thing it doesn't have is an XLR input. So you either have to have a separate audio interface, which you probably have already if you're trying to stream, or uh, just use a mic that's a 3.5 millimeter, like just a on-camera mic can plug right into this and then you got one device and you can do it all and for 300 bucks there's right. never really been anything like my capture card and my computer costs 450 dollars and that's one input it's 4k and this is 1080 but i'd rather have four 1080 streams than one 4k stream for 300 bucks any day pretty much hey d for darius how's it going darius also i think i brought oh darius is in the house what up d also i think i brought this up last time we did this um these little switchers right here these guys are super cheap um they're like that for? i don't know 20 was bucks HDMI? and they kind of work it's just for an it's yeah it's just an hdmi switcher it's a non-powered one but it takes like five seconds to actually switch over so to um switch in real time and have it instant right. is where this thing comes into play and obviously this is just for this would just be for two streams um whereas you have four so like there are significantly cheaper ways to do it um but this i mean once you once you go with the 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 mini it's like you don't want to go back 
yeah, it's I guess definitely if you, worth the three hundred. If you already bucks. had a capture card, they could probably liked, charge a lot more. If you already had a capture card that you liked, then you could just get that little switcher you're talking about. But if you don't have a capture card and you've been thinking about getting one, this thing's only three hundred bucks. It like it's a great great deal. I do have one thing that's been annoying me, and I asked you about this, Josh, last night, I think, and you said it doesn't bug you, so you never tried. But I heard back from Black Magic, you can't turn it off. So let me look. Let me show you guys this. So uh, this is the whole panel, and you see these lights. You can't really appreciate how bright it is. Here, let me turn off my main light here. It's it's very bright, and you can see how much like light it's casting on my hand. So when I'm just in the studio just doing my own thing. I find that it's like shining in my eyeballs all the time and it bugs me. So I thought there's got to be a way to sleep it or turn it off. There isn't. You have to physically unplug the power cable. And so I contacted Blackmagic. I was like, am I missing something? And they were like, no, you got to unplug the power cable. That's like the only major con is it's really bright and you can't turn it off unless you like unplug it. But you said it didn't bother you. You like having lights on all around you though. So it fits your, your style, you know? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't change your white balance. That's what you asked me. Oh, uh, let's but see. It, it doesn't. It's fine, but it doesn't turn hey, off. Hey, Gerald, if I switch mind. from uh, wife, if I, I, I may drop the call real quick. I may have to call you back. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try to switch my internet. Yeah, if it does, just call me on let's, Skype. Hopefully, out. it'll stay on, but we'll see. I'll check the chat in the meantime. Let's try it. Thanks to all you guys for joining the stream. That's uh. Awesome to see so many of you here. Let me check this window. Cool. Okay. And there was All a right. chat here from Gary that I missed. Uh, it's almost too much awesomeness for one stream to hold. Thanks so much. That's Everyday Dad when I said Gary, by the way. Appreciate that. Oh, Gary, and... what up, dude? We missed you at uh, Sony Camera Camp. Yeah, you never. I don't think you went anywhere. He was supposed to be uh, our roommate, I think. Oh, there you Wasn't go. Wasn't he? Totally. Yeah, we had. You were supposed to bunk with us. And th yeah. That's right. Let's see. Yeah, I got the whole attic to myself in those tiny little beds. I guess. It, I'm glad. I'm kind of glad he wasn't our roommate though, because I don't think we both would have fit up there. <laughs> hey, yo. Jake says. Yeah, we want to see here, James Matthews Philip Bloom. pump That's out true. more content. Philip Bloom was in our last stream. Guess he must be busy or something. That's right. He's kind of like a late show guy. He'll show up about 45 minutes in. Uh, let's see. Are you guys from L.A.? I'm from L.A., but Gerald is from Ontario? Which I don't even know where sense you're from. Which because he's, like, he's five hours ahead of us. You'd think that he would be early. Oh, well. Yeah, you got it. That's Canada, for those who don't know anything about Canadian geography. But yeah. Ontario, you got it. Um, Jay Sandy says that loft looked legit, though. <laughs> it was all right. For one person, it was cool because the bed became my, like, desk. Josh had the whole, like, bottom floor uh, sprawled <laughs> over, though. He had, like, three different workstations and stuff. You brought a lot of stuff with you, though. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, I'm checking my... I got notes, Josh. When I, because uh, you know, I normally yeah. like to do like detailed reviews. So because I'm doing this kind of like a review live stream, I've got like my notes to make sure. So you entertain them while I read my notes. <laughs> All right. So um, I, there's a couple of questions saying, can you record? Can you use this as a capture card? So there isn't a record function built into the Atom, but there is a video out, obviously. So. There's two video outs, one that's going into the computer, doing the live stream, and another one via HDMI. So actually, on my live stream, I'm actually recording it in addition to live streaming it through that HDMI out. So I have it going to an external recorder, right. uh, uh, Atomos Shogun, and then I'm recording that. So I'm getting all the nice 4K, crispy video signal and audio as well as pumping out a 1080 signal online. So actually, I take that back. I don't think I'm getting, I'm not recording 4K. I have to actually turn the Sony cameras to output 1080 yeah, in order for that's it to what's work cool. with Atom I, I, properly. No, 1080, 1080 pass through. Yeah. I was getting it was getting a little glitchy actually when I sent it um, on the uh, actually, Sony. I don't know if you know this, part, Gerald, but the, uh, the yeah, Sony right. cameras but have if a. You can uh, still leave your Sony's on 4K and just affect the HDMI. 
Right. You have to you have to switch it from auto, um, where it configures either 1080 or um, 4K. You have to turn it to 1080. Otherwise, it'll it'll come up with a bunch of interference. So that's the thing I found out with the right. Sony. Other so than the resolution that, resolution that you want. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Can it record on a computer without exter external recorder? Uh, I yellow. Sorry, I'm butchering your name. That he asked I can't that. Say um, that I'm not having that problem. Through OBS, OBS you, yeah, OBS, you can record. Like you could use something like OBS and just record in that, because it, it 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 acts like a webcam. Let's see here. Right now, basically the whole thing that you're watching here, like from Josh and I, I could be recording this in OBS. Uh, so you always have that option because like he said, there's two video outs. Josh talked about the HDMI output, but there's also the USB output, which basically makes it show up like a webcam in your computer. And it's really good because it doesn't require drivers or anything. It's basically plug and play, I think on Windows or on Mac. So that's pretty awesome. But Josh hit on a really good point about the HDMI because you could also use it like if you had it connected to your, your Atomos, that gives you a second monitor as well. And you can source out the monitors differently. You can have the HDMI being like a camera pass Dope. through Send that or the me. entire program Send that and then have the other output go. go to something else. So it could almost be like a preview monitor Did for you already... say somebody was running the switcher for you. They could just be looking at the Atomos uh, and just air, that. Just stream. So you get like you. dual oh, dual purposes with the with the video outs. Although Shit, that I, might, that might, I'm not yeah, sure what was might, causing might, Josh's problem. No. But both of my Sony outputs Everyone are set to auto, not to not to ten email, only. Email to me, Josh at Josh is, uh, Auto, which is probably autoing the 1080, and then that one's auto as well. But listen, uh, Gerald, a lot of people are saying I'm blurry. This is the uh, this is the lowest oh, you grade just gave out your video email on the live stream. You're gonna get spammed. That's totally fine. Go ahead, spam away. <laughs> Remember that happened last time. <laughs> So Gerald, this uh, my picture's pretty blurry. What's going on there? Is that me or is it you? This is the worst that I've ever looked on the internet. Yeah, what did you put out this last time? Sub, oh, the, this is sub right. sub 1080. We are going upscaled 480 quality here. It's true, <laughs> but you know what? It, it it's it's not the atom. It's Skype. This is this is just how it's done right now through Skype. <laughs> It's not. It's not Josh's fault. Bandwidth is set to highest on it. It's Skype. I mean, maybe I. Let me see if uh, I could try calling you back again, but I don't know if that'll yeah, help. It's uh. Let me check. I I can't turn up the quality any higher. It's you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's not Josh's fault. Josh's camera looks good. It's just that it's being compressed, sending over. Josh should look the same sharpness as mine, which is still going to be compressed, but he's getting double compressed. He's getting compressed by Skype and then compressed by YouTube. So, but the, you know what? The same thing happened to me like two weeks ago when we did your stream. Everybody was like, wow, Gerald's video looks like crap compared to his regular videos. Somebody's recommending Discord. We'll have to give that a try and <laughs> right. see maybe next time if that looks better. Somebody say Tommy Calloway's in the chat. Hey, Tommy, how's it going? Uh, did you email it to me? I did. Okay. Tommy Calloway. Tommy and I just did a fun I video together. A a um, currently editing it. Yeah, it's definitely, there is a delay on the Skype. It's about five or ten seconds, I think. For your channel or for his? Let's try. Tell, start counting after I clap. And then, Let me try I, something. and I guess I didn't give you any more instructions after that. To Skype. I'm going to turn this <laughs> off and see if it makes it any better. You won't be able to see oh, me on Skype boy. anymore, Josh. Yeah, I don't see you anymore. Just out of curiosity, Josh, are you listening all right. to me I don't on Skype you. or are you listening to me on the YouTube, on the YouTube stream? I think I'm listening to you on the YouTube stream. Uh, my, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm like listening to you on Skype. Like... YouTube is muted. Um, I think it happened when I 
decided to call you back. I could try ending it and okay. calling you again. Yeah, maybe let's try maybe help. Um, doing that thing where we... Yeah, let's, give, let's do let's that. See let's, here. let's recall and uh, see if it's any better. All right. Uh, Josh, yo, out. Yo, okay. buddy. That looks better in sinkage. Are we, uh, you are look we better now? Too. You look a lot sharper, too. Do I? Oh, really? All right. Hey, let's, you know, we'll do this test. I'll say a number, then you say the number that follows. Let's see how delayed it is, okay? One. Okay. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. What's that, like two seconds? That's not bad. I don't know. One and a half seconds. All right. It's better than That'll one work. before. <laughs> yeah, you look, it's a lot better than it was before. You look a lot better. A lot better. All right, so, so now we know. I got to plug in. I normally just I have this floating desk, so I don't like wiring in uh, into the modem. So I just use wi Wi-Fi in the you office. You know what it probably but, was when you plugged in. It st probably stayed on Wi-Fi to preserve the Skype call, so you never actually got your your Ethernet yeah. connection out of it. Because yeah, you are way better now. Like now, now we know. Now yeah. we know. We got it all figured out. Yeah, the comments are rolling in. They're telling you how, how much better you Woo! look. Looks better. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Um, One guy said my audio is like 6 dB below yours. Let's see. S say something. Say something. Uh, say something <laughs> excitable. I look healthier. That's what I just got to comment. I look healthier. I've been eating my vitamins. <laughs> I wasn't before when the chat started, but now... Now I have. I've switched vegan. I watched that Netflix documentary. I'm all vegan, <laughs> and I'm eating vitamins. All right, way better. Wi-Fi blows. Oh, that's Dave. We are all astronauts is in the house. Oh, Steve. You know my boy, Dave? Dave who? Gerald. He's a composer friend of mine. I've used him several times, and I've used him, I used him actually in the Black Magic uh, Moonlight oh, yeah, video. Oh, yeah, you told me about that, yeah. Uh, yeah. quick shout out to Brian. Uh, let me know, not a shout out, but let me know if the, if you find the audio is more balanced now. I put me uh, up three and Josh down three. Again? So tell me if you think that we're about even. Uh, yeah, you did tell me about Dave. I just forgot or whatever. So he's a composer, you said, right? Yeah, he's, he's actually starting a YouTube channel. Um, and this will be kind of interesting. I've been advising him on it, like that he should do remixes and behind the scenes on how you would remix a popular song, but with your own spin on it. I don't know that there's too many channels out there that do that, but that's something that's fascinating to me. Would Is that something that you would watch, Gerald? What, or anyone what else would, care what to What would the in? format be like? Like, give me a little rough idea. It would be it would be a music composer who remixes hit songs with his own spin on it, making like a contemporary remix to like a classic song or something like that. Or like and the video a, uh, is the is the process. Like we're we're documenting yeah. how it's made. I yeah, found exactly. I do like that kind of stuff. There was a series of videos I saw where it was like uh, this guy made a series called like four composers, one or four four mixers, one basically he passed it around to his friends and they each had to do a different spin on something. And I don't even yeah. compose music. And I thought that was interesting. So yeah, I think it is fun to watch a process of, of, of work being done. Get your creative juices flowing, you know? All right. Joel Bottom says, Gerald Undone, undone sound is balanced. So. Look, we're killing it. Our audio is now leveled off. Our video is sharp. Like we, we got this we're, figured out. Yeah, we're only 35 minutes into the chat. It's ironed <laughs> out. <laughs> So this this will be our last stream because we're gonna retire on a high note. You know, we finally figured it out. <laughs> Never stream it again. Uh, oh. <laughs> Is my oh, switch still working? Man. You guys want to see the the BTS shot? Let me get my phone in this frame here. There we go. I thought it'd be a funny angle. I was inspired by your uh, booty shot from the last video, uh, Josh, where you had the one directly behind you. Yeah. You know, be dope is actually if you had a shirt that had ma that said "Make Art Now" and that was, and I had one that said "Gerald, let's get undone," and we wore each other's shirt. <laughs> yeah, and so when you <laughs> when you when you like get one on me or something, then I gotta like fucking hit the hit that cam four, and it's like I just been undone. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool.
One guy asked, Joseph Floyd said, are you guys bringing audio in through your cameras, mini or other? So I'm bringing mine in through the Zoom F6. Oh. And I think you're you're bringing yours in through the, the Mix Pre 10. Is that right? Using a shotgun through the Mix I, Pre? A boy named Jamil just uh, earned you five bucks, Gerald. Just so you know, Jamil. Am I saying that right? Jamil? 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 Uh, that $5 goes directly to Gerald. I get none of that. So... <laughs> <laughs> Treat yourself with something nice, Gerald. Maybe a nice you cider go. or, uh, you know, frosty Canadian beer. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Uh, Appreciate it. But yeah, uh, how are you running your audio? Are you going ro- like a road mic into your Mix Pre-10 and then into the computer? Um, yeah, so road mic goes into Mix Pre-10. It's um, going then directly into the computer. But simultaneously, it's also going through the balanced outputs into the external recorder. So then I can re- I can double the recording. I can Makes get sense. clean audio, you know, for both. I'm I'm doing the uh-huh. same thing. I got mic here goes into the Zoom F6, which then goes into the computer. So I'm not using the Atom for sound at all. Neither is Josh. Uh, but I like I said, I think that's pretty common for streamers. Most streamers have like a an audio interface that they're gonna run their mics into. I think if you're going to spend the money on a nice microphone, you're probably going to spend the money to wire it up properly cuz I don't think these are balanced. These 3.5. No, nah, they're like a camera jack one basically. Mic- yeah. Although they do in the interface, you can switch them from line level to mic level. So that's cool. So you could in theory run in your like keyboard or something if you wanted to. I guess yeah, if you were like a music streamer, you could run in your like your keyboard or something and then have like another simple like dynamic mic and then you could do that but yeah if you're running a there's no phantom power or anything so yeah i I bet you the microphone i bet you it works better than we're thinking especially for live stream i don't know that you actually need balance i mean we're having audio issues that you and i would probably not upload to our youtube channel right (laughs) like regular video quality audio issues we wouldn't we wouldn't do that yeah, I hear but what you're for saying. live stream, I feel like there's a little bit of leeway, you know. So, but I over, think over you know it is cool. I is, think so, yeah. Yeah, but you know what is cool is that you can have the audio follow the camera. So you have two mic inputs there. You could potentially, if you're doing like an interview and doing multiple mics, and you didn't want to go through a whole mixer. Um, you could have a lavalier on one on camera one with the subject and then a lavalier on camera two and you could have those audios follow uh, every time you cut so that could be that could be helpful yeah Josh is talking about these buttons here the a- AFV audio follows video so you can either have it on which just means like one is always on or you can have it AFV so right now three would be the audio that's on and then one would be on that's pretty sweet uh, you can also Oh, DSLR video shooters on here. Oh, love awesome. Hey, Caleb. Nerd. Love the level of nerd going on here. Well, it just got nerdier, Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're here. Is that oh, a small man. prompter in front of your lens? Yeah, I told you guys about this before. Well, some of you don't know, obviously. That's the new Parrot teleprompter. Pa- oh, not new. It's new to me. But the Padcaster thing. The I've been trying it for a couple videos now. It, it works pretty well. It helps with some of the more sophisticated scripts. It's a little bit hard to get used to, but it's not a bad device. Just too too much for what it is. It's like 200 bucks for a piece of plastic, but I don't know what that glass costs. Maybe that reflective glass is really expensive, but I don't know. Uh, where were we here? Okay, I'm at the bottom of the chat now. Can it be used as a switcher for live podcast and for live gaming stream, for example, and I can be recording both via, with OBS? Yeah, absolutely. If you're using OBS, you can record easily, but you can also broad like that's basically right now I could be recording the stream or you could use it independently on this thing or you could use the HDMI out like Josh was saying he does and then he just records the program, we'll call it, the program of the Ada Mini. He can record that to his external recorder and internally in his computer at the same time if he wanted to. I don't have one hooked up right now, but yeah, so there's five HDMI ports, four in and one out. And the out can also be used as a pass-through if you'd like to game on it. So that way you can run that one to your monitor so you have less latency than the processed one. It's got pretty much everything that you need. The only thing I would say it, it lacks, I don't know if you've needed this much, Josh, or not, but there's not really any programmable buttons. So every one of these buttons here is 
has a purpose, but I wish there was almost like a little row of like, you know, C1, 2, 3, 4, and maybe you could set that to whatever you want because they are kind of restricted. There's no functions. You can do macros in the well, software, you know what, but not on here. Yeah, so that's, well, that's the other cool thing is that the, it comes with its own software that has a lot more buttons and functionality. Yeah, um, I'll pull it up on the screen. So that's, talk. That's, that's, ac that's actually where you pull up um, if you wanted to input those still images, like, uh, how did I do it? I've got it you up know, on the screen you wanna, now as you explain You want to do something like that, you, that's where you actually load it in. You load it into the software. And I imagine that as more and more people use this and they get feedback, they can always upgrade that software and add more functionality. And Blackmagic is the king of upgrades. So, I mean... True. Like my 4K now has an anamorphic mode that's shooting a crazy frame rate for a $1,300 camera. I mean, that camera has had four updates, significant updates in a year. Name one other camera company that's done that. That's crazy. That's pretty great. So I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if they if they take our feedback and then give it some more horsepower. Especially, especially if people, more people start live streaming on a regular basis, it becomes more affordable and easier for people to set up for sure. Yeah. Let's Cause one of, one of my complaints that I had at first, I had to diminish right away <laughs> when I unboxed it. I was like, there's no USB-C cable. There's no HDMI cable. It's really in the box. It's just a power cable in the device. But then I thought about oh, it for a second. No, I was like, this thing's only $300. So yeah, you sent I me mean, nothing. I'll buy my own HDMI cable and USB-C cable, but I had that written in my notes here as like a con, but it is kind of minimal that, but I, I don't know, when I unboxed it, I was like, hey, where's the cable? So I had to get my own. Anyway, it's a pretty minor complaint. But like Josh was saying, once you do get a cable, the USB-C cable, it just plugs in right away. The software is great. The software is free. So I don't know. It's It took me all of like 15 minutes to get it going like pretty much how I wanted to once I located a cable. But uh, it's pretty I, intuitive, actually. It's, you know, yeah. I thought like it would be a lot more difficult to figure out. And they didn't send me in it. They didn't really send. Did they give you an instruction manual? No. And, and it comes with like just like a book, a little booklet that says, get the manual online, get everything online. It's like the booklet just tells you to go screw yourself. Basically, it's like we're not we're not doing paper <laughs> anymore. There's no paper, guys. OK, like, but like it is kind of self-explanatory, just like pushing some buttons and you figure things out really quickly. Um but I guess, yeah, I mean, some of these wipes, it's got some fancy wipes and fades and those kind of transitions. Like, this is dope. Oh, where'd I go? I don't know. Can you see me? Nope. There you are. You're back now. There I am. Or you can do the, I was doing the, the DVE pushes. You can, like, squeeze. See that squeeze? <laughs> you're <up>? right. <laughs> <laughs> or you can do Fan this one. Fancy. Just swipes that's fancy. across. And then you got this, like, yeah. top side fade one. Which is actually, go. that's a pretty, that's a nice little one. Like a wipe down like that. The um, and then you can control the time on it too. You see here, it's like half a second, one second, one point five seconds, two seconds. So if I made it two seconds, and then pressed to number two here, you'll see it take a long time for the transition across, which is nice. But if you want it to be instant, you don't have to have these transitions. You can use cut instead of auto, and then when you switch, it'll be like boom, 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 like really fast. But I like the half second, the half second crossfade. I think that that's nice. Somebody mentioned, and I think it was a good point, is that the buttons are heavy enough so that if you like, I saw you that one day, Josh, you had your fingers rested on them and you were like switching yeah. quickly. You don't have to worry about accidentally switching. Like if I rest my fingers on them right now, you can see I'm not pressing the button. You have to definitely press it with purpose in order to make it show up. So the build quality is good. I'll give it that. Well built. Nice size. Let's let's see. Let's look what look what I just made up. Oh, well, Hang on. That doesn't I'll have really to hide work. me so you can see it. Hang on, let me let me do this. Oh, oh is it? Does, does it, it have transparency? Now? Transparency. Yeah. Alex, okay. Can you turn that into a JPEG and send that again? Yeah. Actually, here I can do it. I can do it. There is one quick. thing. If you guys use images with transparency, I had to go into the manual for this. Josh was saying everything's uh, yeah, intuitive. It doesn't Everything work with but PNGs. this. That's right. You have to make a targa file. And you have to separate the alpha channel and save the alpha channel specific order for the Targa file in order, and it has to be 32 bits and everything. And even when you do, it's like, that's something where if you're using OBS, it's so much easier just to add it as a source in OBS because it can accept PNGs and stuff. It apparently does accept transparency, but you better enjoy Photoshopping your document. Although, apparently, 
if you connect the USB-C to your computer and then you can somehow use Photoshop live animation somehow, but I think that's like a future thing and I haven't figured that part out yet. But that was a big section of the manual is like how to get Photoshop to integrate live with it. And that would require probably a second person helping you out though. But you can do that with the Ethernet port, so that's pretty sweet. All right, I'll stop rambling on. Um, Fairlight, oh yeah, I didn't mention that. Good, good point, Jake. Uh, I'll bring the control up here again so you can see. There's an audio panel in the software, and you can see that they have an EQ and Dynamics. And if we open up the Dynamics section, you've got uh, an expander and a gate, which of course you can set the tack, release threshold, everything. There's a compressor and a limiter all in the dynamic section so you can actually control your audio quite a bit and that includes over HDMI or the dedicated mics over here and then you have levels and master uh, master levels as well so the software for the audio interface is pretty well fleshed out as well it's really like it's 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 95 percent of a one-stop shop that you would unless you're doing giant broadcast and like Josh was saying you need to get one of those like hyper decks or whatever they're called but for like a regular streamer like it's got pretty much everything you need, save for phantom power. It's like the one thing it doesn't have. So it's pretty awesome. I think that's all my notes on it, Josh. You got you got any final words? <laughs> about yeah, I'm, the... still try, I'm still I'm still trying to turn this into a... <laughs> uh, what, what is it? A TIFF file or a JPEG targa. file we have to turn it into? T-A-G-T-A-R. It's, like tar it's a targa file, yeah. Oh, there it is. I see it. All right, let's see if we can get this. It's it's still not going to work. I could tell you for sure because <laughs> the, <laughs> the requirements are so... Yeah, we're going we're gonna to try it. We're going to try it. Just add it as a PNG at OBS. <laughs> um, Chris Brocker says, I have wow. absolutely no need for this, but I really want it. I hear you. Reminds me of the first video toaster in 1989. <laughs> what? All right, turn it into a target file and make it all one color <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> Now I'm just giving instructions to my intern. I'm you should just I need to be present with you guys. Get rid of the alpha. Just don't make and it then transparent. Email it. Yeah, <laughs> then email it to me, and I'm not going to give you my email address again. Oh, that's great. You convinced me. I'm buying one right now. Affiliate link in the description below, I think. I think I put an affiliate link in there. <laughs> um, Go to my channel, buy it. I, I can use the right. money. <laughs> we have to, like... Gerald... We'll We'll compete. We're like, no, no, buy from me. All oh, right. <laughs> if you buy from me, I'll, I'll, I'll dance for you. <laughs> uh, uh, siphon see, in uh, and out. I'm not familiar with that term. What does it mean? You're asking if it has the ability to siphon. Do you know what that means, Josh? To siphon? Is that like some kind of downstream thing? I don't know what that means. I'm not sure. What is that? Can you clarify? Siphon. Yeah. <laughs> it, it might not have it then. If uh, maybe it does, I don't know that. I'm not much of a broadcaster to be honest with you. So. Uh, what do you think about the Sony A7 F S4 rumors? What? A Mini FX9? I never even heard of them. Isn't that in the description? Doesn't it say don't ask us about Sony A7 S future models? <laughs> I don't have any information you don't have. I don't read the rumor sites either, to be honest with you. And Someone it's so funny. It's like, they don't really, even when you're a YouTuber, like a lot of these camera companies, they don't give you that much of a heads up either. It's True. not like what you think. Like, you get like, oh, two months down, we're thinking about making this and implementing that. What do you think? No, none of that. It's like a week before everyone, a week before the world knows, you know, and you're supposed to make a video on it. That's pretty <laughs> much it. And if it's black magic, you know when everyone else knows. I had better like luck the 6K. getting the black. They told, they told us that yeah. like tw 12 minutes before it came out. Yeah. <laughs> I had to get my po my first Pocket 4K. I bought it on eBay for $2,200. Oh, because they were That's... way back ordered? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. I still got it. I was like, I'm not even going to sell it. I'm going to keep it because I, you know, I, I paid that much for it. And then I bought and then, uh, and then I think I did. I sold the second one because I did pre-order at the same time. Yeah. And it took Peter like Greg left the super three chat. months to come in. Thanks for joining the chat, Peter Greg. Appreciate it. I, uh, Peter Greg coming in hot. Do you, uh, you, dollar, do you ever watch his channel? Do you ever watch his channel, Josh? He's the one that has that Christmas set. He's always like, welcome to the Christmas room. And he like does camera I'm, reviews I'm and gonna stuff. Gonna with it. I'm going to look at it right now. I think I, so. I you'll think get so. a kick out of it. 
It's like that audio. He's got an audio. He's like, something wonderful happens. When oh, you watch it. yeah. <laughs> I have seen this dude. This of guy's course, great. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, that's like one of those corners of YouTube that you're like, wow, you yeah. delivered me into this corner. How did I get here? <laughs> he's kind of like, he's like a bit like the Bob Ross of camera reviews or something. He's got like yeah. a really quirky kind of thing. It just exists. So you just have to accept it. You know, like, oh, my is. God. Did you, see, I, did you see I phoned those painting? Oh, that was with, so good. Uh, <laughs> I'll see. I don't know if I was it on his Instagram. I, I don't know it. if you guys saw it, but I'll, I can show it to you. I'll post the I'll post the link here. Yeah, do it. Uh, with Bob iOS. <laughs> How does he? This was do, years ago. His Instagram channel is different than uh, than is the way he spells his name. So I always have trouble pulling it up because it's not. I oh, there it is. A phone though, you spell it different. There it is. Okay, I'll just you know what I'll do. I'll just give you guys a. Uh, I'll just do a di quick display capture so you can see my screen. It's worth it. Uh, display capture. Okay, can you guys see this? Zoom in on it. There's Farouk wearing a <laughs> wearing an afro. Do you see that, Josh? Is it showing up? And then yeah, uh, yeah. He's like painting his tablet or whatever. It's so good. This guy's awesome. He's hilarious. He's so good. Farouk is such a good dude. Okay, he's been in the game for a, he's been in the game for a while. I was like, I was talking to him the other day, asking him how many uh, how many years he's been married to his wife, and uh, he started counting out through the iPhones. He was like, iPhone five, six, seven. Eight, eight S, nine, ten. <laughs> He's like ten years we've been married. <laughs> it's oh, like, wow. oh You know you got a problem if if you're counting iPhones to figure out uh, how long you've been married. Jake. That's the problem with being a YouTuber. You you uh, your relationships suffer. <laughs> Jake uh, Guptil made a comment. I I guess yeah I kind of glossed over that. I said that for gamers there is a pass through so you can have lower latency for when you're gaming. But like you pointed out, it has to go on HDMI one because when you're in the software, which I can actually show you guys again, there's a uh, options. Let me pull this up so you can see the software. Good. So if you come up here to output, you see how there's camera one, two, three, four. So you can have your HDMI output only show a single camera. It can show your entire program, including the switches and everything or camera one direct. So camera one direct is the only one that has the like low latency pass through. So if you were gaming, you'd want to put your game in camera one and then maybe your face cam in two through four. And then in this thing, you'd have to customize the picture in picture to take from the correct source to have your face cam show up there, but you can do it and you can have a low latency version of it. Uh, but good catch on that one, Jake, that it's not just any port. I have my switch plugged into port four, but that, I just did it to fill all four HDMI ports because I didn't have a fourth camera to set up for this shot. Um, because I ran out of HDMI cables. Uh, my Sony's require those micro HDMI's. And then I was like, ah, crap. And so I didn't have enough. So I only had the one that I could use. I was like, what do I have that's full HDMI right now? So I plugged the switch in. Uh, oh, video files man. with Alpha Chan. Can't, Kayla just asked if video files with Alpha Chan. So you can't actually load any video files at the moment. Josh said maybe, hopefully... With firmware, maybe, but at the moment, it's only still images that you can, like, press with the buttons. In fact, the button itself says "still" on it, so there is no, like, it says "media," but it's not. It's just pictures, basically. That's what you can do. Limitation there, I suppose. Great show, Gerald and Josh. Thanks, man. Uh, oh, siphon is pretty much a live video thing. Link? Question mark. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the siphon thing. Somebody asked if you still do commercial work like real estate. You just recently stopped? Well, like you were doing architectural stuff, right, Josh? And you just recently stopped? Dude, so um, I recently started turning down clients. Um, I have one last client that I'm working with now. He's got a $75 million home. Um, and I basically have been working on my tutorials. So I've been taking those clients and doing tutorials behind the scenes for that stuff. So hopefully that'll be released in the next few months. Um, but all other client work, I no longer take. Um, it's been, it's a little bit too much. Uh, plus I just, I enjoy doing the YouTube stuff more. So, um, but I will say I got some exciting news. Um, CNBC is one of my other clients that I still occasionally work with. I've been turning down a lot of work for them, 
but they um, they're going to be running a story actually on me on the channel um, and they're going to film a whole walkthrough here probably next week. So I may save my full tour of the studio for live television. That could be kind of that could be kind of dope. Double dip. Um, let's see here. I think we caught up with the questions about the device. I feel like we've we've covered it pretty well. Oh, thanks, Lakeshore, by the way. Add it to the cart with your affiliate link. Can I should check out the tomorrow. Oh, yeah, BH is doing its uh, Sabbath or Shabbat, whatever they observe. They don't do. Oh, you got Boom. the... Boom, there we go. <laughs> All right, let me, let me move you over so we can see it in full force here. All right. There we go. Black Magic Design. They're probably probably not even in the chat anymore, but <laughs> if you're still here, we've there you go. We made an overlay. Did you add that you know, in in OBS? Look, that's worth at least that's worth at least fifty bucks. All right, that took an <laughs> intern about twenty minutes to do. So Polar Pro throws fifty bucks. Black Magic, <laughs> fifty bucks. <laughs> is this how'd you do it though? Did you do it in OBS or in the switcher? No, it's this is in the switcher. I don't have OBS open. So I'm just I'm just in Skype right now with you. Oh yeah, I'm stupid. So, of course that. I yeah. I want to know how you did it cuz I couldn't get the transparency to work. Um I don't know. Let me ask my intern. How did <laughs> you get this? Did you save it as a JPEG or a Targa? Targa. Yeah, so I guess if it's a Targa, then um it automatically has some sort of transparency built in. I couldn't get it the to work. The JPEGs. If you if you upload a JPEG on it though, there's no transparency. For so sure. Yeah, it might be what the background is because the background is gray on this. If you look at it on a, you know, on the computer screen, so that's why there's a slight transparency to it. Um, let's see if I can. Yeah. Oh, it does. It makes you a little darker. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Well, it's better than I could get. Mine was like pink and and destroyed my video. It looked like I was keyed out through pink. It was weird. So I was like, I give up. Maybe maybe we should sponsor these videos and every now and then just like just you know. <laughs> <Bling>. <laughs> We'll go to commercial, <laughs> right? Have a little jingle playing in the background. <laughs> That's the one thing I do appreciate about the Joe Rogan podcast is that he does his commercials in the very beginning, so you can just like he just gets them out out of the way. I appreciate that he doesn't sneak it in there. I I recently snuck an ad into my video, and I was like, ah, I'm so I'm so like breaking up 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 this video to put advertisement right in there just cram it down your throat i don't have uh, a lot of uh like mid rolls i do one with story blocks and i've been trying to always come up with like a funny way to segue to them not like funny but like as smooth as possible so that when people do catch it they go like oh that guy so like it'll be like you know oh and if your camera is malfunctioning today then you might want to check out some new blah, and i go like story blocks or whatever so i feel like i get i sneak it into them a little bit and uh, I don't know if you guys think it's funny or not, but I think it's funny. But I'm not good at mid rolls, so that's. I like the way Linus Tech Tips does it. Tech Tech Ticks? <laughs> Linus Tech Tips does it, where it's like he is so obvious that his segues are terrible that he like makes the segue themselves a joke. But this whole idea of putting ads into videos is not something that I think I'm ever going to be good at. I just do it for what it is. It's funny. It's weird, right, Josh? Like it's a weird thing to have to do, but like. It is a little weird. I mean, it, and there's no handbook on this either. You're just kind of like you're like. Do you remember your first sponsored video, Gerald? Yeah, like for mid roll or for where the whole, where it was like a dedicated video. Well, it was like 45 seconds that you right. had to do in the video. Um, I do. Like that was such a weird exchange for me because I really didn't know what to do and I didn't know who to like ask. So that was a. Uh, that was a little bit bizarre. Squarespace sponsorship. Um, that could be interesting. Let's see here. Um, link to Josh's channel is in the description, Snowdog. Uh, I'm pretty sure it should be in there. There's a link to the Ada Mini and a link to Josh's channel. If either one of them isn't working, let me know and I'll update it. Uh, let's see. Philip, um, if you do, though, if you can tell me or give me a link or whatever to what a siphon is, I'd love to know uh, just for my own edification. Sorry, I couldn't answer that one. What was it going to say here? Yeah, it says PNG will allow transparent backgrounds. Yeah, but it won't, the ATOM won't accept PNG yeah, exactly. files. PNG does the, have transparency normally. Right. So that works for other, you know, like Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop, does not work for the ATOM Mini. How old are you guys? 
Gerald, I actually think we're the, we're kind of the same age. You you go I guess, first. I guess I'm a couple months younger than you. We're born. We're both 85, right? So you're about to turn 34. Yeah, but you yeah, already did so, like a couple months ago, right? July or yeah, something? in July. It, yep, in July. So, so same year, but like four or five months apart. We're both 85s, baby. There we got go. the same joke. We got the same jokes. <laughs> we know we know the same <laughs> stupid 80s movies. Okay, boomer. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I was just watching Bloodsport the other day. Did I ever oh, tell you man. this sensational story? I love Bloodsport so much. The Kumite. Dude, I'm I'm about to <laughs> I'm about to wreck it for you. Do you know oh, that no. it was based on a true story? I don't know. I don't think I did. At the end of the film, it says Frank Dukes, and he was a real fighter, went on to win like 365 fights undefeated, blah, 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 blah. And so it was. It said this was based on a true story. Um, dude, there's a whole like, there's a whole few documentaries on, on YouTube about like the real life story of Frank Dukes. Holy crap. It's amazing that they made that film, that he was able to like trick the filmmakers into <laughs> making this completely made up story. I mean, it's phenomenal as a film. It's like campy and well executed. And it was like not supposed to be a hit. And then it became like this mega hit, you know? I mean, think about how um, so much of my childhood is Jean Claude Van Damme with his Euro kind of gymnastic, kicky. Splits. borderline gay yeah borderline <laughs> gayness right that's like my masculinity <laughs> and and for that to i don't even think jean claude was even a karate master at all i don't think he knew i think he had like a basic understanding of some i something, think his thing was either kickboxing he, he was or most, taekwondo i, I don't even like. think that i think he was i think he was just a bodybuilder gymnast yeah. and he and yeah i think that's that's basically it. And he became this like super mega star afterwards. And everyone lo obviously loves, you know, um, Jean-Claude Van Damme. But um, oh, yeah. it's just so funny how that that whole film launched his career. And it was like the biggest like that story was not real at all. <laughs> it's just crazy. I do uh, enjoy the film, though. <laughs> it's so it's the perfect balance between cheese and like Dukes. I don't know what you would call it. It's a great movie. I love Van Damme. Did you ever watch that meta Van Damme movie called like JCVD where he was playing himself, but it was like he's got lost. He got Somebody, trapped in a, in a robbery situation as himself. Uh, I don't know. Is that the same thing as that show that was on there? That kind he's of, like, but no, like that's like that's recent on Amazon. Right? Him, yeah, it's him playing him, but with a slightly different name, Van Johnson or something. Van Johnson, it's yeah. Just, so this like, is this is this is a better version of that. Uh, and it came out a few years before. It was like Van Damme, the actor, is like hard on money, and he gets caught up in like a robbery scheme, and he has to play himself. As if it's actually really well made. Uh, but it was like I just I've liked the whole the whole story of Van Damme throughout his career. I've enjoyed following it. Do your guys do yourselves a fa favor and look up Frank Dukes, and, <laughs> and 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 you'll see this guy is a like. It's crazy. Uh, I, I would have loved to have been in the room when he was pitching the idea to the screenwriters. Like, no, you don't understand. It's this underground karate um, competition. Nobody knows about it. Only the best masters of the world. It's supposed to be private. It takes place in Bahamas. And <laughs> uh, and I happen to, and I won it. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's so... It's, it's just sensational. It's so good. Is I it, honestly, I don't know. Like he's one of those people that really believes his own lies. So it's really hard to tell where the truth is because I'm sure there's some things that he says that are legitimate, but then there's other things that you're just like, how is this even possible? How? How? Two uh, things, Josh. The first one, just a small yeah. little high five for us. We have been streaming for I think about an hour. We've sent 110,000 frames. And we have not dropped a single frame, which is like a new record for me on uh, on streaming. I haven't dropped a single frame. 0.0%. 0 .0%. Wow. That is a m magical thing. Second thing is there's a great comment here that says, uh, when a movie says it's based on real events, it's not legally bounding and doesn't usually mean to be true. That reminded me of something that's a funny movie story. You probably know this one. But Fargo, the epic Coen Brothers film, says in the beginning, uh, you know, for the sake of the survivors, we've kept the names, we've changed the names, but we've kept everything else 
kept everything else the same for the sake of them or something like that. Uh, if you ever watch an interview on the Coen Brothers, they completely made that up. The whole story's made up. Nothing about Fargo is true, but they put this like really serious opening thing that's like, this is real events, and we've we've changed only the names, but we've kept everything else real to honor the survivors or to honor the dead or something like that. But the whole story is just complete nonsense, and they just put that in there that's just because they're like, yeah, fuck it, you know, like whatever, why not? Well, so with Bloodsport, I think the the writers actually and the producers they legitimately thought it was a real story, um, and because Frank to this day still says it's a real story, so that's did anybody that's, like uh, fact check him like go to like the Bahamas they, and go well, to when it <laughs> when it when it came out I think it was a big thing I think everyone was trying to fact check and trying to figure it out and subsequently he kind of made a name for himself as a as a hoax as a charlatan um i mean he's got a whole sense he's got a whole litany of of sensational stories i mean he said that he he went to the philippines and rescued a bunch of children from a, a pirate ship or something <laughs> i'm not i'm not making this up <laughs> like, so good. there's interview yeah it's crazy uh I went down a Frank Duke's wormhole the other day, and I'm so <laughs> thankful. I was like, "This is amazing." You end up making a video hope. on it. It's got nothing to do with my regular content, I... guys, but you got to hear me out, okay? <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Um, uh, somebody asked a legitimate question that you might have an opinion on. Not that blood sports not legitimate, but it's not really related. It says, uh, <laughs> "How hard is the jump from Premiere to, to Da Vinci?" Now you still edit your main edits in Premiere, right? But you just color in Da Vinci, or are you doing everything in Resolve now? Um, no, I still I still use uh, Premiere for pretty much everything. Um, they've recently stepped up their color grading panels. Their Lumetri panels now have hue versus hue, hue yep. saturation, these kind of big, things that I a use. big bump. Yeah, that I use all the time in uh, DaVinci. Obviously, DaVinci has significantly less bugs than Premiere, so I do the bulk. I still do the bulk of my color grading in DaVinci, and then I'll just do a batch export, and and then I'll do it through Premiere. So it's it's definitely my my setup is not ideal. It's not you know optimized yet for speed and efficiency. Uh, I would love to just switch over completely to DaVinci, but I have not made that switch yet. So for, for me, I did. And the question was the question, any tips? What was it? How hard is the jump? Oh, um, it's one of those things where I, I was trying to wait for the perfect moment. I was like, Oh, I got some videos to do. So I won't do it. So I waited until I could, but it's kind of like, any, I would say that the, you learn all the things that you learn from editing that keeps, but it does still take some time for me. I think it was probably like two weeks to be, uh, competent at it. And then probably two months to be fast, like fast to how I was with Premiere. Um, that's editing two videos a week, maybe two and a half videos a week. Took me a couple weeks and then a couple months to be fast. I guess it could be different for everybody. I also watched a uh, like a masterclass thing on Resolve, which helped a little bit with the trial and error. But uh, I think the, probably the biggest problem is I still think there's less content on Resolve than there is on Premiere. You, you can find 10 videos on how to do everything in Premiere, but with Resolve, there's only like one or two or none in certain cases. Yeah. But the efficiency of the program is much, much better, and they they are just on top of it in terms of pumping out new features and making it e – I mean, like, for example, a Sky replacement in Premiere – I don't even know if you can do a sky replacement in Premiere. You have to do that in After Effects. In DaVinci Resolve, it's so easy. You can literally set one channel, the sky, to an alpha, and then uh, the track right below it, your replacement sky, and then you can track it in there. So you can do like a lot of these things that you can't do in Premiere that they want you to jump over to After Effects in. You can do that in DaVinci, and you don't have to round trip anything. It's all right yeah. in there. And it utilizes crazy your efficient. hardware better too. My exports are so much faster in oh Resolve than my they are god. In have, have you done the batch export yet, Gerald? Like I, if you're batch exporting clips or something for a project? Well, I haven't had to round trip anything, so I switched from like I export in Premiere to export in Resolve. So I just noticed like so, a, a video might take me twenty minutes to export in Premiere, it takes me like three minutes in Resolve. Like it's way faster because it's utilizing my graphics so, card. So I recently started uploading to Blackbox for okay. stock footage. 
And so we exported 120 clips the other day. 120 clips at 1080 would not take uh, Premiere that long, but probably a couple hours, right? Sure. If you think about how much, right? And you'd have to send it all to Media Encoder to do a batch export. With DaVinci, it's one click. You can put it all in the same timeline, batch export, and it will label them individual files and export everything as one one render queue. Um, so it's, I like if we tried doing that on Premiere, that would that would just be a nightmare. You have to send them like individually to Media Encoder or something to get a batch right. going. and then over you have to, and you and you have to put in the ingredients of like how you want it ex you know, the export settings individually. So you have to do that 120 times. It doesn't really make sense. Uh, so, in fact, the reason why I know that uh, is because when I was working for CNBC, I was shooting 4K files for their, I was competing with their C300s when I had a Sony A7S Mark I. Right. And the only way I can get the image to look good is I had to shoot 4K. And then later on, before I gave them my footage, I would like do a little color pass on it and turn it into a crispy 1080. And uh, I was doing that in Premiere at, at first. And like the render times for a whole day's shoot, like all of those clips, you know, we're talking maybe 500 clips or something, was like two days. So all my footage would come in two days later and they were like wondering where my footage is. Once I switched that same process over to Resolve, it would take an hour. Yeah. So... And then I would just export it overnight or something. Somebody crazy? asked about frame rates for shooting weddings. And uh, that's not somewhere I guess you could have the easiest answer to. Obviously shoot in whatever your region is, if you're in PAL or whatever. But uh, I think that you only really need two two frame rates, your, your regular talking frame rate and then your slow-mo frame rate. And if they're multiples of each hey. other, you could, you could just shoot the whole thing in your slow-mo frame rate. You can't do it like a... 30p and a 24p here in NTSC that's a little bit weird unless you slow it down but you could if you're doing 50p 25 or 48 24 that stuff's easy yeah if you're trying I always shoot 30p and then turn it into 24 if I'm shooting on a camera that doesn't have like a really good 60 you know 4k 60 or something Get like the 80 percent dreamy kind of look yeah, or whatever. 80 yeah. well you do 80 percent and then you twixter it 50 percent so now you're at uh, I guess you're at 60, the equivalent you'd, of you'd a, have 60. a similar to a 60 P. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I yeah. like, sometimes I like the 80% though for, you said for weddings, there's some sh shots in a wedding that 80% would be nice. Cause you don't necessarily want to watch say like a certain walk or a certain pan right. at 50%, but maybe just a little bit of an 80% gives it that little flowiness, you know, could <laughs> it's be nice. Like, that's the thing. I think that's why. Two, two, uh, 240 frame rate hasn't really picked up mainstream yet. Because what are you using that like, for? Like, because it's like, let's say it's an action shot of like hammering something. It's like this. You have to watch it for like 15 minutes to see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, unless, you're, <laughs> unless you're filming like a chameleon's tongue. I don't know what. You'd yeah, do. like w like 120 is kind of the max. It's, yeah. it's kind of like perfect. You don't need anything more than that. I was messing around with the Z cam uh shoots 240 f and uh, i was like what would i actually ever use this for and the only thing that i could use is i got some great footage of pelicans swooping down and taking a fish out of a fisherman's hand and so at 120 you definitely see it and it's awesome but at 240 it's like oh man you could see the pelican's expression on his face and like the fish is like still flap it's just it's beautiful that's the only time you would use it for like those crazy high you know action shots wildlife i probably would use it but uh for weddings yeah, be like what are you gonna use that for yeah what shot cutting the cut, cutting the cake <laughs> <laughs> you need so much foley to make that interesting <laughs> uh, you can slow 60 frames to 80 or 40 for 24 you can the only issue that some people run into i think is that if when they shoot everything at 60 is then maybe they're doing that vow sequence and now they have lips. If you have lips in the frame and there's other kind of movement, then you might not want to do six. Ah, if it's static, you can do 60 down to 24 and you won't notice any judder. But what I have seen is I've seen problems where people do like a pan with lips in the frame. And so then you get the judder from the pan, but you can't slow it down. 
because then they're out of sync. So that's that's only the consideration to make if you're going to shoot everything in 60. Let's say is you got to watch your watch your combination now, of. Now, whoever. one thing I've been wanting to do is actually shoot it at 24, and then remove frames so it plays back at 16 frames per second. Like a Charlie so that Chaplin gives, kind of. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you turn it black and white and you can give it that. It's not just like turning it black and white and giving it that grainy footage. It's actually, or playing it back faster. It's actually that there's frames missing. Yeah. Uh, so there, would you have to do that wonder, manually though? Because I don't think there's like a, there's, I don't think there's a, an automated drop frame for wonder, 16 in the programs. No, I think maybe you just speed it up like put it at 110% or something. I don't know if that would be the same though cuz that the actual frame data is there. You know. I suppose you could just First, put a whole bunch of splits in though. It'd be a lot of work, but you could like, yeah. You know, would tap, 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 split, tap, 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 split, tap, 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 split makes some sort I guess of macros maybe you, could, on it. you could probably export it. You could probably just just export it with those settings, right? I've never I tried. Can, I don't know if they exist. Y- some if things... you can, you're you're able to do it in DaVinci, not in Premiere. That's for sure. <laughs> Some programs only have a drop down for frames, not like where you type them in. So then the drop down, the lowest it might say is twenty three point nine eight or something, you know. But if you could type in, they should try typing in a frame rate. I wonder what the NTSC version of sixteen would be. It would have to be like fifteen point nine nine eight four or something like that you know that's the ntsc standard for 16 frames a second boys and girls if you don't watch oh (laughs) man we have gone full nerd mode (laughs) and Uh, now for a word from our sponsors (laughs) caleb said that that 240 for retiming though uh yeah he, he likes his 240 for retiming what are you shooting what are you shooting 240 with caleb are you on a red or because not a lot of cameras can do two. I guess I guess GoPro has two forty. Caleb shoots but on DSLRs. A... Didn't didn't you read his channel name? <laughs> yeah. So what DSLR are you shooting? <laughs> it's got a good two forty. That's what I want to know. Uh, just shoot at twenty four and work it in a thirty p timeline. Brian Hour says, yeah, that that probably would do it. Although, doesn't Premiere have an automatic reinterpolation of footage if you do that? I don't, I'm not sure. Like, I'm actually looking to get a different aesthetic, not for it to stretch it out and do frame blending or I forget what the other automated version of uh, frame blending that Premiere does. But if you right click, you can. I think it defaults it. to just their basic frame sampling and then blending and optical flow are the upgraded ones. But yeah, it does. As soon as you drop it into the timeline, it interpolates to whatever your timeline's uh, frame rate is, which is handy if you're yep. doing a simple. If you're like, I'm definitely gonna go 30 into 24 at 80 percent. But if you uh, if you don't, if you want it to do non-drop frame, I guess I th- that's actually a setting you can choose too. I think it defaults to dropping frames automatically. So if you put a 30 mm-hmm. into 24, it just drops frames. You have to right-click speed 80 oh, percent, whatever. GH5 does 240. I did not know that. The GH5 does 240 in what? 720p? Or GH5S, right? GH5. In... Oh, GH5S, yeah. Oh, it has variable. Yeah, that's right. It's the very it's in-camera variable, but it does 240. I think it's how's quite the, a... How's the quality on it? It's is soft. It 1080? It is, but it's softer. The 180, the 180 is like borderline too soft. So the 240, in my opinion, is quite a bit softer. Caleb, Caleb says, I don't, just being a shit. Yeah. <laughs> this conversation uh, went super nerdy into like frame rates and stuff like that. That's all right. This is your audience. That's what they came here for. <laughs> you guys want to see Otis? Oh! <laughs> what, can you, what can you do to show us? Is there anything you can do? Uh, that's basically it right now. It's just voice <laughs> activated. That's... If you scream, if you all scream in unison, it it will glow. Glow! Oh, oh I didn't realize that it was singing. triggering to your voice. Yeah, I honestly I didn't even suit. catch that until now. Computer, turn off practicals. Well, this, there it goes. Oh, it turned Computer, off. Computer, turn on practicals. Did it turn off Skype? Oh shit! It turned off my atom. <laughs> <laughs> it turned off my atom. 
I think I That's think you're amazing. still coming in with audio though, no, I, but it's just not video. You're coming I, in. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Let's see if my Skype is. Uh, I may have to call you back. That's funny. <laughs> oh, it looks like you're coming back in. I'm just seeing a Skype logo. Now That's it looks like the stream's brought to you by Skype. That's pretty epic that uh, who's like, turn it, whatever, turn off the whatever, let us all stream. Oh, did we got gotcha? you? Wait for it. You're still black on my end. Hmm. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm connected with you in Skype, but I'm not seeing your feed. Well, see, there it is. I messed it up. You might have to go into Skype and choose your video source as uh, native or whatever. Yeah. We had it going. We're so good, Josh. We, we were going so good. And then you just had to show off. Turn off practicals. Is uh, your video feed one of your practicals? <laughs> Where is my camera? Got a super chat here from Cameron Glenn. Josh, have you ever tried Panasonic? I never see you talk about them. If not, why? Maybe we'll see if Josh can come back to the video fold before he answers. But they're asking if you... I don't think... I think you asked... I talked to you about this last week, Josh, and you said that your your answer was that Panasonic's doing cool things, but there's too many brands for you to keep up with or something like that. All right, Josh is clearly dead. Uh, oh, he's calling me back. Let's see if we got it. Okay. I'm on the call with you, but I can't see any picture. This guy. Oh, wait. <laughs> this guy. All right, you got Remember it. Yo. I'm still trying to figure this out. Yeah, there's audio, wow. but no that video. My only two guesses is that it would either... Right. Well, you carry on without me. Um, I'm going to see if I can figure this out for a couple more minutes, but it's kind of good timing because I do have to... Uh, uh, I have to take this business meeting. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, <laughs> that'll be Josh's... Uh, <laughs> Final. I think you. I think they can still hear you, so you can say goodbye. But that's your. Uh, that was your sign off. You're like turn off practicals. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> that's your fade to black. Next uh, time you uh, you're you doing a stream, you should say that. You should be like, all right, guys, <laughs> turn off practicals. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I do that. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I should have done this. Killed art now. <laughs> oh man, that's phenomenal. I'll figure it out. Gerald, thank you, buddy. Yeah, thanks for joining the stream, man. It was a pleasure. I'm glad we finally oh, got it working nice and sharp. Look at us go. Oh, yeah. And then until we didn't. And then we that's, didn't. That's right. Until we didn't. All right. I'll catch you All later. All right, guys. Man. Computer, turn off practicals. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to uncrop myself. Oh. That sounded really weird, but I just said. All right. I'll see you later, Josh. Okay. So if I move this over to the middle. There we go. Full screen now, fam. What do these other shots look like? See a little bit more of that one, and a little bit more of this one. Oh, we got some weird stuff in the frame up there. Okay. Let me check the chat here. Okay, you guys are obviously making fun of him. Otis killed art now. <laughs> uh, Josh just started Judgment Day. <laughs> Okay, call Caleb. <laughs> yeah, are you on Skype, DSLR video shooter? I can give you a ring. <laughs> you can voice command off but not back on. Well, I think what it is, is because it's connected to his computer via USB, that when he disconnected it, it probably uh, defaulted to some other video ch channel, like some other video source. So, it, so cause Skype seems to want to keep things going. So I think it just kind of like, I don't know, maybe as a webcam or something, and it went to that, and I think he would have to... Uh, disconnect, reconnect, and then change the video source back. That's what I assume would have happened. Uh, but the answer to your question, Cameron Glenn, I'm almost positive about Josh's Panasonic thing. I'm going to take these headphones off so I stop yelling because I don't need to talk to Josh anymore. Um, because something similar to it came up in, the, in a previous stream. And his answer was just that he likes Panasonic. He likes some things they're doing. You know, we, we talked about the S1H and uh, probably the EVA1 and stuff like that. And the gist of it was just that 
he doesn't feel like he like he feels like he's got a good handle on his Sony's now. But that was a switch from Canon not that long ago, and then the Black Magic stuff. It's it's kind of like I can't also get Panasonic like give them a good try. There's just too much too much to learn to know to to really have a good opinion on it. So I think he just kind of you know declared a little like. Uh, ignorance by choice kind of thing based on it, but he likes them on paper. That's my best paraphrasing Josh answer there. Um, there's a great shirt waiting to get made. Alexa, turn off the practicals. <laughs> yeah, it should definitely, we should make like a channel art for him or something like that. Unfortunately, making dinner for the fam would have loved to though. Some other time, yeah. Now that we, uh, now that I kind of got a system figured out, the last time that I did this, we did it over on Josh's channel. So this is the first time I've had a guest on my own stream, and as long as they seem to plug their internet in and don't use LA Wi-Fi or whatever, uh, it seems to be pretty good. So I'd be happy to have you on, Caleb, uh, next time that you're available. I I stream whenever I don't have a schedule, so we should set something up, and then you should definitely come on because uh, we can throw you throw you in there. Um, is 8-bit 422 significantly better than 8-bit 420? I made a video on that. Actually, it's up on my channel. It called something to that. You could find it quite easily. The gist of it is that for correctly exposed footage of regular things, no. If you're chroma keying, if you need, like, color keys, then yeah, it can make a difference. If you're not exposed well and you need to, like, push, or if you're doing major hue and saturation adjustments, then yeah, there's missing color resolution. But if you nail the shot, you wouldn't notice a difference in in both cases. That's kind of always the case. The same thing between 8-bit and 10-bit. There's more forgiveness. Um, then the other thing would be gradients. I found that gradients didn't make a difference. There was claims online that they did between 422 and 420. I didn't find the gradients were any different. But there's a huge difference in gradients between 8-bit and 10-bit. And that makes sense, of course, because of the amount of uh, you know individual shades that can be reproduced. There's a lot more colors in 10-bit than there is in 8-bit. But that'd be my brief sort of recap on that. Um, Josh is a Wi-Fi goof. <laughs> okay. So what does he use? Just tuned in a few back. Uh, Josh shoots... Actually, we shoot pretty similar uh, these days. Like Sony A7 type cameras for a lot of run and gun travel stuff. And then Blackmagic for, you know, more controlled things. And then... I believe up until recently, because like, you know, Josh was talking, or you might have missed it, but Josh was talking about how he was doing more client work. A lot of the stuff to show that he was working on, I think required them to use like a C300 or something like that. So he was shooting Canon a lot, but when he shoots for himself, that's not necessary. And he used to also shoot like 1DX Mark II and that kind of thing. I don't think he uses that much anymore either. So I think it's mainly Sony and Blackmagic, which is kind of the spot that I'm in right now too. Um, I'm definitely interested in the S1H. Uh, I played with it already, but I want to see what's going on with that RAW. I know they have a firmware update that addressed the blue channel. So with that being fixed, and then once we get that RAW in there, I think the S1H is going to be the ultimate. But I'm holding off until I get sort of like a full test of it. But right now I'm Blackmagic and Sony. Uh, LA Wi-Fi, not great. LA water pressure, the worst. <laughs> Thanks, Shane. That's funny. Uh, Gerald, one more question. I'm buying a new camera for the next season, wedding film. Which camera should I buy, EOS R or the A7 III, please? Um, you know, there's some debate about that. Like, you know, if you're shooting 1080, the EOS R is very capable and it's and it's very good. Um, the A7 III is probably more serviceable all the way around and uh, would be the one that I would choose. But... You can make either work. People have done a lot, and the EOS R's had some firmware updates that do make it better. I still think that it's not a fully baked camera, in my opinion. So I would choose the A7 III, but the A7 III's got its own drawbacks as well. Uh, I just like it a little bit better. Did you see Panasonic's latest update on the S1? Manual exposure control for high-speed video. Didn't expect that. Weird time with S1H out now. Yeah, what's funny is that when Kayla and I were actually both at the S1H launch event... And I talked to somebody there and they basically said that we shouldn't expect the manual exposure control for high speed video on the S1 because that's one of the sort of like the characteristics that's separating them and then there wouldn't be much sense to roll it out. But I guess they did or will. So that's interesting that they decided to include it. Panasonic's generally been pretty darn good for firmware updates as well. Are those real tungsten bulbs in your background? 
yeah, I mean, as opposed to like LEDs or something, they're they're Edison bulbs. Uh, they. That's probably why you don't see that. Uh, you know, you can tell like the way the filament kind of. Um, the way it sort of glows out, I feel like it has a specific look. The stream obviously is exposed a little bit differently than when I would shoot normal stuff, but I like them and I don't like them. They're small scale ones, so you do get like a hotter, like I don't really want to get into light bulb technology, but if you have a giant, you know, element, then you get a different kind of glow than if you have a small one because, well, in video because you're hot spot. And anyway, so they're, they're a little bit small for what, if you want to like make them more photographic in a sense, but they're okay. This studio is probably all going to get reworked relatively soon. I'm going to say in the next month or two. So we'll see what we come up with then. Uh, hey, Gerald. My last freebie. Love your content. Got to go. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. What's this going on? I mean, there's like free super chats. Is that like everybody gets one or something? Because that's like the third person. Or did YouTube just hand out a bunch of super chats? Was there like some sort of thing that they did that for? Uh, get D for Darius in here with you. That'd be fun too. That guy's very expressive. I like, uh, we should have them on. Should definitely get, maybe we should do something regular like this because I've been debating on doing some kind of like podcast type thing. Um, but if I can get this formulated in a way that works well, then we could just maybe do that. We'll just have like regular guests on until I figure out whatever the podcast idea would be. It'd just be kind of like a stream, fun stream idea. Super chat here from Yesen. Thank you very much. That's very generous of you. Does Sony stop making firmware updates for their older models like the A7 II? Sony does seem to have a quick sort of fall off for their firmware. I feel like it's it's uh, more like, you know, Android phones or something where you get like a year of updates or something, but they don't seem to do a lot of distant updates. At least I haven't experienced many of them. And because they turn out new tech all the time, it's pros and cons of this, right? They got a new camera every three months that has some great new feature on it, but you're probably not going to see that feature on the previous camera. So it sucks when you got one and then a new one comes out and it's got some new feature. But at the same time, I guess we should still also applaud them for the fact that they're every three months they're pushing something new and cool. But it does kind of suck when I've got a couple A7 III's here and they don't have eye detect and video and all these other things that the other cameras have. So pros and cons with that, right? Uh, thoughts on OLED TVs for use as a main monitor color grading. Uh, some skip the legacy. There's a big range in OLED TVs in terms of their quality, so that's too broad to say. There are some really great OLED panels out there, although some of some of the like color professional high end OLED panels they're like fifteen thousand dollars. So, um, but there's other OLED technology that can make for some nice movie watching, but is just not very good for judging contrast and stuff like that on uh, color grading work. I've got a couple monitors that I'm working on to make some recommendations for, for what I think are good, like all, like not $5,000 monitors, but like, you know, $500 to $1,000 monitors that I think are going to be, for clarity, $500 to $1,000 monitors. I think I said that too quickly. That I think will be good buys. And I should be making that probably in December, make a couple videos on that. Hey, Gerald, Tim from Tenerife again. I have a question this time. I have an old Sony NEX VG10 with two E lenses. Uh, do lenses keep their value? You know, I really don't know. I, I can't say that I looked uh, on that market at all. I know that, you know, there's a very vibrant lens market on eBay, but I don't really, I don't really check it too often. I'm, I'm, that's out of my element. Apologize for that. These smartphones that shoot 4K 100 megabits without crop, but these Canon cameras can't. Is this because of cost cutting or some other reason? I don't know for sure. There's a lot of things that make you think that Canon's got some theories. Like, obviously, the 24P one. This is one angle you could think. Why do they have cameras that have 30P but not 24P? It's not a technological limitation, right? And then they roll it out in firmware. So that side might suggest, okay, there's something going on. But at the other time, Canon has notoriously kind of had, you know, worse processors in their cameras relative to competition that focus on video. So they might have a hard... They're not really... For their, for their hybrid cameras. I mean, their photography cameras have never really been focused on uh, pushing, pushing the bits as well as other cameras do. Even though the funny thing is that that whole DSLR video movement started with Canon. So I don't know which direction it is or if it's a combination of the two or if it's a bit of like lethargy or like, you know, old mentality in the boardroom. It seems like there's a bit of mixture going on there and it's pretty hard to predict what Canon's going to uh, consider important moving forward. They have made some some steps forward recently but it's obviously like I said with that 24p example being just like asinine it's tough to say 
Uh, thank you for your content, learning a lot. What are your essential accessories in your backpack when you go for shooting? Mine are pretty lame. Like, I mean, they're not exciting, but I bring, like, a lens brush and a uh, passport pocket, what are they called? X-Rite passport color checker thing and a uh, little light. Like, I bring things for exposure, cleaning, servicing. Like, I don't know. I just like, to, I like everything to be pristine and I like to dial my exposure in. So those are like my accessories. Bigger ones than that would be, you know, things like monitors and uh, peripherals, like uh, power. I bring a lot of power stuff with me, you know, uh, batteries, V-mount batteries, V-mount adapter batteries, V-mount to L battery. Like I like to never run out of power, always make sure my exposure, my weight balance are perfect and keep everything clean. That's what most of my accessories are, practical things, I guess. Hit us up at Lens Pro to go, and we'll help you get your hands on an updated S1H for testing. If we can, I'm not sure where you're located. I'm in Canada, uh, Ontario, not too far from Toronto. When, well, updated S1H, I mean, do you know anything about the raw firmware for the S1H? Like when, when we should be expecting that? Is that what you're talking about? But I appreciate the offer. That sounds great. Uh, what camera are you using for the live feed? That's the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. This one is a Sony a7 III. That one's got the 35 millimeter f1.8 on it. This one's got the Sigma 18 to 35 on it. This one is the, this is a Sony a7, point this way. <laughs> this is a Sony, let me do this. This up here is a Sony a7 III with a 90 millimeter, the 90 millimeter macro 2.8. Um, yeah, you can see the black magic right there. And then there's a Sony up over there. Q. Uh, best monitor for X-T3. Mm, see, the thing is, I like recording externally, so I would say Ninja 5, but that's a recorder. For monitor, you can go a lot of different ways. There's a lot of options. For recorder, the best value is the Ninja 5, flat out. And I think that you do get a decent amount of extra value from having that recording option, both because it's easier to edit, SSDs are more economical. So my answer is almost always Ninja 5 when asked that. Uh, thoughts about the Mavic Mini? Uh, really cool idea, especially as a Canadian. Uh, I was talking to DJI about some fun things maybe we could do with it to test it out. But uh, I'm not a huge drone guy, so I don't get that excited about it. But I do like a lot of things about the Mavic Mini. I think for what it is, it's a pretty, it's a success. And uh, I'm excited to try it out anyway. You should, you're good at it. Did I miss the first message there? It sounds like a compliment. Thanks, random now. I'm not sure what the first part was. Oh, get D for Darius in here with you? Maybe I missed something. Uh, I love seeing you and Josh interact in real time. It's a lot more fun and informative at the same time. More BTS on how you make your videos would be cool. Uh, okay, I must have missed the beginning of it. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, where were we? new studio setup. Oh, okay. I get, I get where we're. Yeah, I think I'm going to change it up a little bit, Caleb. Um, I have had some limitations. So you see the depth here. Um, if I want to do like a wider, I can maybe show you guys here. If I want to do like a wider shot, there's not a lot of space to move around because like, just, I'm just kind of limited. So I want to take advantage of my space more this way because it's longer. And then I could just, you know, have lights and mics and stuff on this side, but then use the longer space. So I might take that wall over there and maybe like paint it or something, kind of get like an infinity look to it and then maybe try to shoot this way. But it's going to you know, have to rearrange everything obviously to do that. So that's what I'm thinking. But it's going to be a slow process and I'm collecting some stuff I need along the way. And then once I feel like I've got a handle on it, I'll just probably take a week and blast it out. <sighs> do you think speed boosters really, this is from David from Italy. Do you think speed boosters really can help? can keep black magic quality at top performance or native lenses better. I think speed boosters are the way to go on the, uh, on the 4k. Anyway, I'm using one right now. Uh, obviously the more expensive, like the meta bones are better than the rest, but, um, cause the let's use amazing lenses where the native lenses are good, but they're, I don't know. It, I find that you get, you have to spend more on amazing micro four thirds lenses than you would on like just getting a really good Canon lens and put a meta bones on it. That's my opinion. Like the 18 to 35 is fantastic with the meta bones in the pocket 4k. So I like, I like using speed boosters. 
Live stream with guests sounds like an awesome idea. Would love that content. Thanks, Joel. Appreciate it. Good iPhone analogy. iPhone is like Canon versus Android is like Sony. Uh, I would love a weekly regular live stream with guests. Do you know Film Riot? Ryan Connolly would be great guest. Appreciate your genius, Joel. Thanks, Shane. I do. I don't know Ryan Connolly. Uh, I met like met him at NAB, but like I don't know him well. But yeah, he's a great, great guy, great channel. And uh, thanks for chiming in. And thanks for the super chat. Appreciate it, Shane. Uh, check the text says, are you and Josh getting anything for Black Friday or Cyber Week? So here's the thing. I actually just picked up a second A7 III because there was like a holiday saving going on, 200 bucks. And uh, so, like, okay, I need one. I'll grab one. And then I got it right on the day it ended. I, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you guys if this stuff's embargoed or not, but I do have some early... I'll give you one hint. And if I'm wrong, I apologize to Sony. But I just found out that Sony's going to have a Black Friday sale. The A7 III is going to be 200 bucks off again. So I guess I didn't even rush out and get it, but it's going to be off again. So I don't need another one. Uh, But had I not got one then, I would have definitely got it now on the Black Friday sale. There's also some big sales going on for some Sony stuff. If you you buy the more expensive stuff, there's some big price cuts going on with that stuff coming. Outside of that... um, the stuff I've been buying, I don't think really has been Black Friday. Like I ordered some cables and stuff today and like just, you know, like some boring stuff that you need to keep everything going. And I don't really feel that's exciting Black Friday stuff. So I don't really have anything planned for Black Friday buys. Could you fit a five inch monitor on the Parrot teleprompter? Been toying with the idea of getting one as a budget inter- iteration for dock work. Could be compelling for vloggers to fit a five inch monitor on it. Not, what do you mean by fit it on it? That's the only part I don't really understand. Um, like, like, could you put a five-inch monitor in it so that that's where the where the text is coming from? I think it would depend on the thickness. Uh, it's, but it's meant it just. If I'm not answering the right thing, let me know. It's meant to interact with phones because of the app, and the app allows you to change the margins and the size and the speed and everything like that. So. I want to say, like, use a phone, and the thickness is more phone-based as well. But I'm actually thinking about trying to get some kind of, like, just cheap Android phone that doesn't have a plan or anything like that, because I don't want to put my actual phone in there, because then sometimes it, like, rings and stuff like that. But I can't turn it, like, to airplane mode, because then you can't use the remote with it. So I just want to get, like, a device that's just Bluetooth, no cell, no Wi-Fi, or, like, it can have Wi-Fi, but I'm not going to turn it on. And then just have it in there as, like, my, that's just my script device. And I would only want to spend, like, not a lot of money on it. And I should be able to find something. But I want it to be, you know, decent enough. Battery doesn't have to matter because I can just have it plugged in. That's what I'm looking to do. Like, really, uh, I think tablets would be too big. Let's say, like, a really small tablet. I guess just, like, a couple gen gens ago phone. Does it take less processing power to handle the readout of a smaller sound? Chat just jumped on me here. Oh, there it is. Uh, of a smaller sensor compared to a larger sensor with an equal resolution. Um, well, so yes and no, the, the answer is that, um, reading out lines of resolution will be the same, but if the sensor has like complexities to it that, cause obviously the really large sensors will use things like pixel binning and line skipping and that kind of thing. So that obviously, well, they do that so they can make the video work, but those things will, um, uh, will impact how it reads it out but typically speaking when things are the same like a 6k sensor on a full frame versus a 6k sensor micro four thirds we found that the micro four thirds ones have read out faster but it also could be that because the sensor is smaller that allows more space inside the body to allow for hotter faster processors and so since sometimes this technology is kind of kept close to the developers they don't really tell you like it's not like when you go computer shopping and you see all the specs they just tell you, oh, this is our new fabulous number nine processor, whatever. You don't really know, like, what thermals are like compared to other ones. But I have a feeling that it's like to keep bodies at a relatively similar size, larger sensors have less body for the amount of work that would require, like, the camera would melt, where on a micro four thirds, it doesn't melt to have that that extra speed going into it so you can read out 6K faster. But in theory, if you're just reading out lines, it shouldn't matter. So I think that's why I think there's more going into that. If the sensor's really big, then obviously, then it gets more complicated. But then you have something like the GFX100, which is a medium format camera that reads out quite quickly, faster than Sony's older sensors. But again, it has a big body. So maybe they accommodate, again, maybe they're really pushing that processor a lot. And so it does require more power, 
but they have a way of dealing with the output. I'm just theorizing here based on based on how I would approach a computer. I don't actually know the true answer of the, the processes that they're using on these on these cameras. This is a very good stream. Fairly new sub and new to DigiVideo, so the learning curve looks huge. Uh, things have changed a bit since my cable access days with tape, I bet. But I appreciate you watching the stream and being a new sub to the channel. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Thanks for the for the kind words. The super chat here from Gregory. Uh, thank you very much. That's very generous of you. Appreciate it. Um, busy making spaghetti. That's what Caleb's cooking. Okay, okay. I don't think I'm going to stream much longer here, guys. We've been on for an hour 40. That's usually when I start to wrap it up because usually I get kind of like stiff and hot. But uh, let me just see if, uh, you know, if there's anybody that I like completely missed something they've asked a bunch of times or whatever. If you have any super important questions that you really need asked, just at me in the chat right now. Please don't fill it up with like 45 minutes of stuff. Just like if there's something you've asked a few times that I missed and it's important to you, you know, ask it now. Otherwise... I'm sure I'll get you guys in the next one, but I'm just going to scroll through here and see if I missed anything. Um, a lot of talk about Ninja 5. I think the Ninja 5 is great, great value. I still stand by to use it all the time. In fact, I'm using it right now over on this camera, the one that you're looking at, because I think I mentioned to the ones that have been here longer that I ran out of HDMI cable, so I had to use the Ninja 5 as like micro to, because my HDMI cable that's long to, my, to the ATEM right now, is uh, A to A. Couldn't plug that into Sony. So I'm using Ninja 5 as like an HDMI converter right now. It's handy to have those things because it's got uh, in and out. It's got a pass through. So stuff like that's handy. Um, that's why that's part of my, I guess, necessary accessories to the other question of like, I usually have the Ninja 5 with me. Probably the light bulb tech talk. I'm being good at it. Oh. <laughs> uh, thanks, Steven. I think the Shinobi will do the trick for filmmakers on the budget. Yeah, so the Shinobi's great. The two things the Shinobi doesn't have, though, compared to, say, something like the Ninja 5, which might be worth a couple extra hundred bucks to you, is that there is no HDMI pass, as I just described. So sometimes I'm annoyed where, say that I wanted to use the Shinobi as a self-facing screen right now, let's say, on the Blackmagic, but I also wanted to send that output to the Atom or to my capture card or something else. I can't because it's only in. There's no out. That's the one thing on the Shinobi that bugs me. The second thing is there's no recorder. So... Yeah, that's obviously why you're saving the money. But if you've ever recorded a file, say you're using the Sony, right? You record that XAVCS codec internally in the Sony on an SD card, and you bought that SD card and you bought the Shinobi. And then over here, you recorded it on the same camera, Sony A7 III, let's say, but you recorded it to the Ninja on an SSD. You got way more gigabytes on the Ninja than you did on your SD card, but yeah, you spent probably $200 more on this combo than you did on this combo. But then you take those two things and you stick them in your computer. You say you do that once a week for a year. The time savings on being able to edit the files in the Ninja 5 is is surprising. The the fluidity to your timeline, how quickly you can like scrub clips to find like where you want to like insert a cutaway or whatever. It it literally adds up, I would say, to probably I don't know. It's hours. It's hours of time saved. So when that when that multiplies out to me that I've had the Ninja 5 since it came out now, I don't know how much money I've, I've saved in, in time, but it's considerable. The using mezzanine codecs, using uh, intermediary codecs is, is so much nicer than using highly compressed codecs. Anyway, so you just have to decide if that's worth a couple hundred bucks to you. If you don't edit a lot and you don't mind the small clips, then maybe not, you know, but if you are, if you, if you ever found you're like, ah, oh, this, these files are too compressed or whatever, then you might really appreciate it. What's the difference between downsampling and pixel binning? Well, pixel binning is a way of combining things where sampling can... There's a lot of different words like super sampling, downsampling, oversampling, and sometimes they mean the same thing, sometimes they don't, but the basic gist of it would be that usually when people talk about sampling like a 6K to a 4K, they basically mean that they're just kind of like squeezing it in from like maintaining it. So you're like getting that 6K resolution and you're just like putting it in a 4K box by squishing it down. Where pixel binning is more like you take individual groups and this is algorithmic and based on the developer. So Sony might do it differently than somebody else, but they take like little groups and they go, Oh, we'll average that out. You know, that's going to be a red at this luminance. We'll average this out. And they like average them all out into sort of a smaller picture, like a mosaic of a smaller picture of the other one. And that's an efficient way to deal with a lot of uh, megapixels. But the problem is that's going to have a problem with your noise because your noise is also getting averaged out, which can be good, but it can also be bad. If you have a noisy image, it's not going to help. Although you end up with a softer, weirder image. Um, 
and then moire is a problem as well because you're not getting the you're not getting the 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 detail of the resolution being pushed down you're kind of anyway the, the idea is that it's it's more like averaging out groups of pixels instead of just sort of like pushing it all into a smaller box you want to push it into a smaller box if you can is better than averaging out pixels that's a really rough explanation of what i gave but i think it's adequate for a stream uh New guest, each show, etc. We all appreciate how real you are and the end for sharing your knowledge. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. Um, are you optimistic or pessimistic given the bleak future for camera companies? I'm optimistic. I don't know. I think that people are always going to want to photo and video things and people are always going to want dedicated tools over combined tools. What those dedicated tools are going to look like in the future, I don't know, but I think things don't just change, right? We don't just go like, today we use cameras, Tomorrow when you wake up, what's a camera? Nobody knows anymore. Now everybody shoots on their toaster. It's not going to be like that. But when you are shooting on your toaster, uh, you know, five years from now, you would have eased into it. And we'll be talking about this same kind of stuff on this stream. And you guys will be like, what do you think of the new toaster? And we're all okay with that. It's not, it's not going to be crazy. We'll know what's going on. But I think there's always going to be shooters. And there's always going to be people who want to use a dedicated tool and not their iPhone or whatever, you know. Maybe I'm wrong. What do I know? I'm optimistic, I guess. Thanks for the live gear info. Have you used adapters on the Blackmagic? I'm curious how it would work with an M42 or maybe a PL mount adapter for super speed lenses. I have. Let me grab you something for that. So this is a lens that I like to use. Let me find my focus here. It's locked off, so just kind of have to get into focus. Uh, maybe I can throw this over here so you can see it better. So this is, what's this, the mirror 24, I think. Um, this lens here on the bottom, I have, you can't really tell, but it's a uh, M42 to EF. It's from Photodeox. It's non-conductive, which is important because when you put this into a speed booster, which is conductive, you don't want the contacts to, so this is anodized. I recommend that because then it's non-conductive. Don't get like a you know, chrome one or whatever. Um, anyway, so that just turns this into EF, and then you can stick the EF on the speed booster, and then you get all the advantages of the speed booster, and it just, it doesn't really add anything to the adapting of it, because it's just one, just like one little, extra little, you know, little bit of flange. Um, so I use these kind of vintage lenses sometimes, and that's fun to adapt like that. I've got like some Helios and stuff like that on the shelf there. And, uh, it's great because most of these have an image circle for full frame, so you can still use the meta bones. Nice little combo there. Uh, I like this idea with live multiple YouTubers. Great. Thanks for commenting on that. Cameron Glenn, any thoughts on the new Tesla Cybertruck? Uh, I think it looks cool. I like that it's not something that we've seen before. I like that uh, I like that it's different. Uh, I thought it was really neat looking. It reminds me of some, like, well, they call it Cybertruck for reasons. It reminds me of, like, some 80s what the 80s thought future vehicles were going to look like. I guess here we are. We're in the future. He fulfilled the prophecy for us. I think it's cool. Obviously, I don't know much about it any more than any of us really do. We only know a little bit, but I watched the videos on it and thought that it was cool. What monitor do you use when color grading your footage? Like I said, I want to give you an update on this. Right now, I'm using a BenQ VA panel, which is fine, but I'm looking for some of the lower Delta E, and I'm going to be making, I'm going to be testing thoroughly some stuff uh, in the in the next few weeks, and so that way, a few weeks from now, I should have an opinion to be able to share with you guys on that. I need a price cut on the Sigma 35 1.2. Yeah, it's a hefty one, both in size and in tag. Uh, pixel bending versus down sampling. I guess I just already talked about that. I have a video on this stuff too. Most of the things you guys might uh, might think to ask me if you're new to the channel, like you don't have to go too deep into the archive, but a lot of videos that I made in the end of 2018, the beginning of 2019, I decided to tackle a lot of these topics. So if you search my channel for whatever you're thinking, you probably, you might find a video that's very specific where you want to know codex, you want to know the different, like pixel binning versus line skipping, you want to know about, I don't know, the more efficient storage mediums and stuff like that. I've got videos on all this stuff and I recommend you watch them because they're much more efficient than I would be on the live stream. You know, it's, it's, it's a well-organized video. Uh... Well, I've been in the store and back, and Gerald is still going. When are you going to open up the chat line for call-ins? <laughs> I have to figure out the that whole thing behind it. I guess I could... What would I do? Well, I've got Skype integrated. I would have to, like, just, like, 
have like a Skype account that would be like the Gerald on the Livestream Skype account. You guys just call me. That might work. Very informative. What do you use for lighting? Uh, all kinds of stuff. Right now for this one, obviously those are just practicals that it's involves. This behind me here. Can you see it in this shot? No, you can't. Um, is a GVM light panel. Just a simple RGB light panel. I use it to throw on the wall there. It's the uh, 50RS. I have a video on it. It's a decent bang for the buck. And then these are Aperture MCs. I got one there and one under here. Just throwing a little color on this shot because this, this angle is usually quite bland because I don't ever shoot this way. And you can see them a little, it's kind of nice that you can see a little bit of the, the orange glow on here, which is nice. And uh, then I'm lit here by the 300D Mark II, which is overkill, but why not? Because I had it. So that's, that's what it looks like. About. And I do have a hair light up in the ceiling, just a cheap little light, because all I'm doing is to like, give me a little bit of separation from the background like that. And then that's the 300D. That's only at 9% and that's through the the big light dome, which you can see here. So that's the, the full size light dome at 9% and uh, that's how bright it is on me. <sighs> okay, it's dinner night, g g dinner night, g dinner time. Good night, my dudes. See you later, Caleb. Thanks for joining the chat. I'm actually getting a Pixel 2 XL to do the exact same thing. To use for gimbal object tracking clips instead of just a phone with no plan dedicated to video assistance. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing the same thing myself. Um, can we watch the stream somewhere if we missed the beginning? Yes, this one I think is set up for DVR and I'm going to leave it up. So probably like a couple hours after the stream ends, it'll process it, process it. And then you should be able to find it on my channel and make sure that it goes public so that you can click on it. Uh, where were we here? It's one pan setup time. DSO cooking shooter. That's funny. It's like shows you how he does everything in one pan. I like those videos from him. Looks great, Gerald. Thanks for the stream. Appreciate it, John. Uh, oh, yeah, you said that you were going to check in later. I don't know if you saw most of it or not, but we gave a full demo of the uh, of the Ada Mini, and I think a lot of people really liked it. I think it's really great. It's working working well for me. I like these shots. I like the little the mix on it that you can get going on there. It's cool. And when the stream ends, I can give it a fade to black. Or I can, I guess I could throw up my uh, logo, too. So can do all that with the push of a button. When's the next stream? See, I don't have a schedule set up, but I, w I would have to, I guess, if I was going to have guests and everything else. It's just, I, I'm a bit, kind of just like get into what I'm doing. So I'm working on a video and then I work on a video till that's done. And then I, I, I find that it's a different day. I don't actually even know what day it is most of the time. So it's difficult for me to have a schedule for streams, but I should look at that. I do try to stream though. Like usually if like two weeks goes by and I haven't streamed, I'd be like, oh, I better throw a stream down. So at the latest, you'd think within two weeks. Did you see my leaming luck question? I don't think I did, Twink Master. Will you ask it for me one more time? And that'll probably be the last question I get to. I'll go through these ones and I'll end it on Twink Master, we're still here. Any experience in using a GH5S with a speed booster on the Sigma H25 on a gimbal? Not on a gimbal, no, uh, because that's a front heavy lens. Uh, but uh, experience with that combination, yes, but not on a gimbal, sorry. What chair are you using, Gerald? This is an AK Racing chair. It's, uh, I don't know if it's Canadian or not. Uh, probably not Canadian, but I mean, like, they sell it more in Canada than they do DX Racers, but it's very similar to the other chairs, like DX Racer and stuff like that. Um, difference between down sampling and pixel binning. So I see that you've phrased that a couple times. I did my answer. Maybe I'm just late in the chat, but I do have a whole video on it. But the answer, in case you missed it that I just gave, I'll give it even more brief now, is that down sampling is when you push an image down into a smaller box from a higher resolution, and pixel binning is a way of averaging smaller groups of pixels to you know mathematically find some sort of equivalent smaller version of that to fit it into a tighter frame and those are based on you know however the company wants to calculate that stuff some do it better than others uh an oversampled image is a nicer image to work with if you can just squeeze it down than it is to average out pixels because of advantages in noise and moiré uh, time is money, so if it makes Ninja, is cheap for the price. Uh, Ada Mini does the DSLR like M50 have to have adapter. I don't think I understand that question fully. Sorry about that. Can I use the Ada Mini for live recording with three or four of my cameras at a wedding, events, or a music festival for a live recording at the same time with each 
camera record also an SD card. Yes, you can. So each one of these cameras, although you'd have to have, you know, runtime considerations, like these Sonys that I'm using now, they have 30 minute record limits, but they don't have record limit over HDMI. So there is that consideration. But uh, outside of that, unless they all had ninjas, then you could record all to their ninja and then pass through. But then secondly, on the Atom Mini, if you had it connected to a computer, you could capture everything on the Atom on the computer using something like OBS, or there's an HDMI out that you can use to record, which then you could just connect that to a recorder, like Animus Ninja 5, and then you could record that feed through HDMI. So yeah, you do have the options to basically lay it out however you wanted. You just have to consider the camera's runtime if you're trying to record to their SD cards. But you don't have to worry about that over HDMI. Um, okay, Sony users uses already shoot on toasters. LOL. <laughs> Want to buy my A7. Ah, the chat jumped on me, but there's a... Okay, so yeah, I think I was just late in the chat. So I'm going to have to scroll down a little bit here, guys. Thanks to everybody who joined the chat. And uh, sorry for, you know, a couple of the comments that I missed. It's hard to keep up. I apologize. Uh, hopefully, if we catch in enough streams that eventually I'll have gotten to all of you over time. Can you get on a live stream with Peter McKinnon? <laughs> I don't I don't know. I'm sure he's probably a pretty busy guy. I have a question about pixel size and sensor size. It seems like the smaller sensors give the phone footage look. Is it related to the pixel size or more about compression? Uh, what's your definition of phone footage look like low quality because sensor size isn't everything obviously like you know micro four thirds i mean depending on how small the sensor is but like micro four thirds is a big enough sensor to get high quality footage so it's not like right now this is a micro four thirds sensor so there's more to it than just that now there are really small sensors and some pointers and stuff that do have an issue and older sensor technology is worse but hard to say What's for dinner? I'll have to figure that out. I haven't eaten in a while. I find that if I eat before I stream or before I shoot a video, uh, my stomach makes a lot of weird noises, just like, you know, digestive noises, so I don't like to eat before this stuff. I don't know if the mic can pick it up, but you never know. So I'll have to raid the kitchen after the stream because I am getting hungry. Man, I'm from London. Would love to connect. If you ever need help on a shoot, I'd love to shoot BTS or Assistant. Great to know. Thanks so much. Just to be clear, I'm in London, Ontario, not London, England. Some people, I know I don't sound English, but sometimes people get confused. They don't realize that there's a London in Canada. Uh, you can do it all instead of having an intern like Josh has. <laughs> Although it would be handy to have some help. Um, is it still live? Yes, I'm still live as of right now. If you hear this... That was live, unless you're watching this after the fact. Then it wasn't. Um, okay, how do you expose the... Okay, this is Twink Master's question. How do you expose the leaming LUTs for Sony right? I keep getting underexposed clips, even when ETTR to the sky. Okay, so... That's a tricky question. I do find that Leeming's Sony LUTs are a little bit darker than I'd like. I find that he has them extremely ETTR'd, where I would have been fine with the stop and a half over. I feel like he's like two, two and a half stops over. So you do have to go to the absolute extreme. Uh, the easiest way to do this is if you have an external monitor, you can just put the LUT on the monitor and then expose to the finished look. Otherwise, it does take a bit of trial and error getting used to it. Um, depending on what picture profile you're using, say you're using S-Log2, I would set my uh, Zebras to like 103 plus lower limit, and then I would put the thing that the thing that was crucial to me not to clip I would get zebras all the way up to 103 plus and then come back a third or two thirds of a stop and then you'll find you get a pretty good exposure but I found even then that I was about a third of a stop darker than I liked I've talked to Paul about this and I think he might work on maybe one that's not as extremely ETTR'd but it does take like you know a third of a stop back from 103 percent so it's very 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 ETTR so you do have to watch Clipping, obviously, when you're at that point. Uh, yes, I did see your exposure guide video as well. Yeah, so take what I just said and add it on to that exposure guide video, and I think you'll you'll get what I'm saying. Thank you all for the compliments on the end of the stream here. Um, is the Shure SM7B way overkill for gaming? I wouldn't say that anything is overkill or not, but there's things to consider, like do you have the ability to drive a microphone like that? Is it worth it for the money? Because, you know, even something like a Rode Video Micro can get the job done if the mic's nice and close and it fits the room. And Different mics sound better or worse with different voices and stuff like that. I usually like to work my way up through microphones. I'll try and try 
designs and polar patterns of microphones that are cheap, see which ones of those I like, and then get maybe a slightly upgraded version of that type of microphone. You know, right now I've been using the Samson CO2 for a long time, which is a cheap mic, but I was testing to see if I liked these sort of pencil cardioid mics in here, and I do, and so I have been using it for a long time, but I just haven't figured out which one I want to go for like that medium tier one to replace it. I think I've decided, but I'm waiting for it to come in and I'll let you know. But I wouldn't just go ahead and buy the ships without have ever trying the Samson CO2 first, because why bother spending that much and taking the leap? So that's my advice on microphones. Uh, which capture card do you use to live stream? Well, I'm right now. This whole live stream has been about this, the Ada Mini. So this is a four input. Uh, HDMI scaler. So I've got four cameras connected to this right now. This number four is set up to my Nintendo Switch, which isn't turned on. And this is number two. This is number one. And then this angle showing the enemy is number three. So this is what I'm using to capture right now. This is a USB-C connection. That's what's connected to my computer. And that's how we're capturing this video stream. Other times I've used a PCI Express Live Gamer HD2, which is in my computer. That's for one camera. So I'm testing this guy out now because Blackmagic sent it to me to give it a whirl. Uh, you know, see how I like it. So, and I'm really, really liking it. It's pretty awesome for doing this kind of stuff because it's pretty cool that you know, I can switch to like a BTS shot like this uh, and keep everything pretty consistent, as you saw. And then I can give you a close up and then cut back like this. I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, if you are interested in it and you just joined the stream, I would wait till the stream is published and go back on it because the first like half hour of the stream, I, I went over it in quite a bit of detail there. Okay, I think we're at the bottom here. Fake London. That's what Philip Bloom always calls it. Um, that's my favorite mic, favorite mic ever. Love all your super technical videos. I appreciate all the effort you put in testing. Thanks, Twinkmaster. Appreciate it. And I just messaged you on Facebook. Okay, cool. All right, guys. I think, I like I said, I apologize to the to the chats that I missed, but I, I thank you guys so much for joining the stream. Hope you had a good time. And uh, thanks for bearing with Josh and I as we, you know, worked at all the details. I think we had that sweet spot there where we really got it working. He got his hard connected cable, then his quality went up. We had a split screen going. I think we leveled out the audio. We both had our Aiden Minis working fine. I think we had the stream licked. So... I think we can move forward from here and hopefully have some more guests on. I appreciate your feedback on that, that you're going to like doing that or that you'd be interested in seeing that. So I appreciate that. But I think that's going to be it for me. Uh, thanks so much for joining the chat and I will catch you guys in the next one. Like I said, hopefully only about you know a week or two from now. But maybe we'll set up a schedule when I figure out what's going on, get some guests in there. If you, uh, if you guys are on Twitter and somebody that you'd like to see on my live stream is on Twitter, then at me and them at it and I'll see it and we can maybe, you know, make some jokes about it and see if we can get them going. Uh, but that's going to be for me. Thanks so much for joining the stream. I'm going to try my fade to black button now. There's a little bit of a... When I want this to be processed and published to YouTube, generally when I stop streaming, it works fine. But for you guys that are watching it live, if I would just say, all right, goodbye, and then end the stream, it doesn't end at goodbye. It ends like 15 seconds before that because of the latency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit fade to black and then I'll put up my title card, and in my head I'll count to like 10 seconds, and then I'll end it, and I'll see how that works in the post, take advantage of the Aiden Mini. Anyway, so I'm going to do that now. That's going to be it for me. Thanks so much, guys, and I will see you next time.